On today's episode of the Mark Titus Show, PFT Commenter is joining the show for the first time ever. I've I've been on his shows a lot. Uh, I think he was, was he technically on episode zero, TJ, which we don't count. As we do the lore of this show, which a lot of people out there, there are a lot of Mark Titus Show historians that, that want the official record. Um, let the official record show that episode zero was not a real episode. So PFT is, is making his first appearance on this show. But he made it solo because first time he was on, he was with Big Cat. Um, and he and I have never really done a show together, just the two of us. So I was excited about the idea of just talking to him about whatever comes up. Um, and, and that's what we did. We, 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 it was kind of like the show with Brandon. We just kind of sat down and, and, and let the, let the conversation go a million different directions. Uh, he, he is a guy and we, we talk about this later in the interview, but, um, I would not be at Barstool if it was not for PFT. He was, he was the first guy at Barstool that I knew personally. He was the, the, he, he legitimized Barstool for me. Um, and I, I, my whole journey with this company which wasn't much of a journey most of it was like me living obviously off on the side as barstool was doing their thing but like i you know i've, I've lived in the barstool universe for a while because of my affiliation with pardon my take and all of it comes back to pft and just kind of like me knowing of him and sort of knowing him before he signed on here so uh i don't know it dawned on me um before we did the show that that or, or coming into this week that uh for a guy that I've known forever, he, I've known him longer than anyone else at this company. Um, it's kind of wild that we've never done a show together. So I thought, PFT, come on the show. And we did, and we talked forever, and it was a fun conversation. And his dog, Blake, is here, uh, which I'm kind of bearing the lead. Blake is Blake is in the studio, so that was, that was freaking awesome, too. So uh, without further ado, enjoy my conversation with the one, the only PFT commenter. All right, joining me now is PFT commenter's dog, Blake. Uh, we asked Blake to come on the podcast, and then PFT was a was a add on. He brought with me him. along. With Your him. dog is in the studio. This is I was I was prepared to ask you about the new dog, and you brought the dog into the studio. Yeah. Um, you're beaming. You're just like glowing over there. This has been a great week for you. You I'm, get a new puppy. Uh -huh. Dan Snyder's gone. Yeah. What a week. I don't know what I did like a month ago to deserve all this. But <laughs> I'm I'm happy that it happened. I'm trying to think. What have I done in July? I've been a real piece of shit during July, so I, I guess I got to keep doing that. But Blake. Yeah, he's awesome, but it does come with a lot of responsibility. Was was Leroy the first dog you had? Was this like that? Was this because uh, I I asked for for selfish reasons that uh, I have a dog Moses that is twelve and a half. Mm -hmm. I am I am not um, you know I'm not blind to the realities of the world here, and uh, it, it I, I don't know. Like I I I'm I'm just curious. Like was Leroy your first dog? Because Moses was my first is my first dog, yeah. and I'm I, I need you. I need help preparing for. I don't even want to say. Oh, it. it's yeah, that's it's tough. Um, yeah, Leroy, great way to start a podcast, yeah. by the way. Talking about it. Leroy was my first dog. I got him when I was twenty two or twenty three. Yeah, and yeah, uh, you go through a lot of life with a dog when you get a dog at that age. Like a lot of changes. A that, lot that's of when I got Moses. Like the same. I was like the same age. Yeah, yeah but yeah, on the other hand, it does it. It teaches you a little bit of responsibility, right? When most people in their twenties, you know, they're they're out absolutely no no home responsibilities that they have to do whatsoever right. right you're lucky if you do the dishes once a month but yeah uh leroy was he was my dog from 22 i guess till 35 yeah and then yeah it took me a little bit to get i was gonna that. well that, that's why i brought up leroy was like what what was the process like to decide you wanted to get blake it was it just was, ready was, just felt ready i felt excited about having a dog yeah you don't want to get a dog to replace the old one that's because, what i'm worried about is like yeah. i don't want it to feel i don't want to feel like i need to apologize did it, it was yeah are you like sitting there like like sorry <laughs> praying to leroy yeah, like I sorry felt, buddy i didn't i felt this, bad i was like yeah. you know, leroy i still love you if you yeah. can hear me right now uh no my advice to you actually some some people get a young dog when they have an old dog and yeah, then they and then have they, the old dog teach the young dog the ways of the house. That's that's so deep. Yeah, it's like, so, like, <laughs> yeah. like the ancient kung fu master. Well, it, it's been hard for us because we we just moved to Chicago a week ago. Uh, the apartment we had in LA was was tiny. Uh, we had nine hundred square foot, like just one floor. Obviously, we, there's an elevator to get up to our floor, um, and now we got a house with a ton of stairs, and it's been heartbreaking because Moses like can't. He can get up the stairs, but it's like it, it it reveals how old he is when he's like got to walk up and down these stairs. Yeah. And this week has been like really brutal with like I've spent an absurd amount of money trying to figure out salute like they're hardwood stairs. So we're, we're he slips all over the places he's going. And with we're buying strips down. We're buying the strips. Yep. We're buying the 
we got like sticky pads that we're putting on them. We're we're doing all <laughs> these things. Um, but yeah, this week has been rough for yeah. that, and uh, I don't know. Dogs we'll are see. dogs are amazingly adaptable, though. Yeah, they, he'll he'll be fine. They He's a trooper. To, they just don't like, especially if they're old. They don't like new places. Yeah, that's that's very much what's going on with him. So, um, we put the strips down for him too, and he's uh, he's a little bit shy about stairs. And yeah, in Chicago, it's just it's, stair, it's stairs, it's on stairs, stairs on stairs on stairs. He's turned into a little celebrity though. This guy's his head's getting big. Oh, right. I was I took him to the park the other day, and we walked out of the house, and a neighbor just yells at me. He goes, "Hey, Blake!" And then. <laughs> He's already starting to learn his name too, which is crazy. Yeah, he's going to be very smart, way smarter than me. So Blake like looks at him. My neighbor comes up to me, goes, "Yo, you're never going to believe this. I'm your next door neighbor. My name's Blake." <laughs> so I'm like, okay, well, dude, right. what's mine say? Yeah, Sweet. <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> what's mine say? So we had we had a meeting at the Blake's yesterday, and uh, I'm at least I'm I'm terrible with names, so I'm like I'm not going to forget. You're, that you you won't forget that guy's name. Blake the neighbor. Then we're at the dog park, and uh, this lady drives by in a car, and she slows down, comes to a complete stop. And she sees Blake playing with another puppy. She rolls down her window. And she goes, "Is that Blake?" Oh my god! And then the uh, the lady that owned the other dog that he was playing with just like stopped and was like trying to figure out what's going on. They're like, "Is Blake famous?" I was like, "Yeah." yeah so are we? I guess Blake's famous. Yeah. Now. Are we considering monetizing this? Like, well, you, you have to. You, you, have you know, to, like how do you, you back, start a <laughs> back in in the in the fifteen hundreds and the sixteen hundreds? You had as many children as possible. That's so true. <laughs> they could help you till the land That's and right. milk the cows, churn the butter, feed the ducks. You have to get dogs and you have to put them on Instagram as soon as possible. So, um, no, he doesn't have he doesn't have social media yet. He's too young for that. I don't want that. Yeah, to you don't want him to mind. become addicted at a, at a young age. Yeah. I, I want to figure out, though, what because Leroy had his breaking news lane that he stayed in. Right. Which was funny. It's a great it's a great bit. And it, it continues, right? Like you still he's got he's a ghost. Still, account. Yeah, yeah. 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 But when when Leroy, when uh, <laughs> when actual NFL insiders would have to credit my dog for beating them to it's, a scoop hilarious it was funny That's so, so I, I don't know what what line of work blake wants to get into i was thinking maybe you could be a capologist there's no celebrity <laughs> yeah. capologist yet right yeah, yeah. someone that just but that would require me learning all the different all the things yeah, about you the don't, yeah you don't want to do that especially the, nba shit how do you keep track of that i don't i don't i just i i just inform my listeners that i am not an amateur gm and i don't know any of this shit and i'm i that is one of the more bizarre things to me in consuming sports because uh, I, I it was just something that I literally never thought of once when I was growing up and watching basketball, football, you name the sport. Um, you would think like we should trade for this guy if you were a fan of a yeah. team. Like we, it would be cool to if you're a Jets fan. You're like I would love Aaron Rodgers. Like to, to, that's cool that we traded for him, all that sort of thing. But I I don't remember a single conversation when I was in high school with my buddies about. If the Pacers make this trade, that'll put them over the cap. Or if they sign this guy, they you know, like nobody ever talked about that. And I don't know who to blame for this, but I I absolutely hate it. Bill because, Simmons, yeah, for, for pretty much. I blame Bill. I, bl I blame Bill for like thirteen year olds across America being like, "Yo, what if we got?" I I'm trying to think of a a player that like back in when we were growing up. I would probably be like, "What if we got?" Ray for Austin on a two-way exemption. Yeah, right, you know, like right. That, that like, what the fuck is a two-way exemption? Who, yeah. who would possibly know what that is? And Woj tweets it out like everybody knows what, what right. he's talking about. Uh, the 10-day contracts, the the two-way exemptions, the mid-level exemptions. It's like you have to – they've they've sneakily trained kids to get into doing complex math. Right, right. And I don't a, like that's it. A, that's a, that's a, the kids wouldn't do math unless it has to do with salaries and, and all that stuff. Uh, I saw like this week uh, uh, Colin Coward – and J Mac were talking about trading Shohei Otani for five first round picks, and yeah. people were killing Colin because they were like, "You can't. That's not how the MLB <laughs> works." I'm going to defend Colin and say, "Good on you, Colin, for not knowing." Yeah. You know, like that's that's awesome. That tells me you're a real man that watches sports, and you yeah. know, you're not flipping through legal pages, I saw, reading CBAs and shit. When I saw that, I was like, "Well, fuck, I didn't know that either." Yeah, I didn't. I didn't but then no I still idea. wanted to be like Colin Coward's such an idiot <laughs> for not knowing that. It's your job to know that. And then I thought, wait. Does that mean that it's my job to know that? Because right. I certainly don't. But yeah, I mean, if you're the Angels, or if you're a team trading with the Angels, if you're the Giants, you can just say, "We'll give you eight first round picks," right? And then put that in the contract, and the Angels are like, "Eight? That's a lot. That's a lot of okay." And then it turns out you don't actually have to give them any picks. I think basketball, baseball is probably up there, but it feels like basketball is probably the worst at it in the sense of like the the. The informed fan knows way too much, and it's very frustrating to be a guy that talks basketball. And, um, you know, like a situation like the Nuggets win the title, Bruce Brown we know is going to become a free agent. He eventually signs with the Pacers. Um, I, I feel like I'm supposed to know 
like I kind of got the read that the Nuggets didn't have enough money to to re-sign him, even though they they definitely wanted to. Um, but I had no idea. I, I I was like, I don't <laughs> I don't know. I don't I don't even know what guys are worth. Like that's the other thing that I I'm always blown away. Like guys like Rosillo always seem to like know. Like you see a guy signs a new contract, seven years, one hundred and. Ninety-four million dollars, and mm-hmm. people have takes like right away. That's too much. I wouldn't give him more than one hundred and ninety. Yeah, like, but they had to spend it, Mark. I'm like, who the fuck would know how much you're supposed to give this guy? Like, do, I don't. I, I don't get it either. At do, all. Do, do all these people have algorithms and spreadsheets at their own homes that they've, they like? They've got the ESPN trade machine opened up nonstop. Just yeah, running simulations. Yeah, and it's very weird when you talk about it like it's your money too. That's the other thing that I always found weird is like I don't care. What I, I I mean I don't I guess like if you only have a certain amount of money and you're allocating it to one player I guess I sort of get that argument but it was always weird to me like why would we give this guy this much money and I'm like who it's not your money you're not the one paying this guy out of pocket like I'm confused by he could have bought 500 firefighters and teachers for that same <laughs> right. amount of money if you if you look at their salaries yeah with Bruce Brown I I believed him when he said. I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, I'm and coming Mike back. Mike Malone was like, yeah. we're running this motherfucker yeah, back. Yeah, right. He, we, he ain't going nowhere. I think that's what Mike I did Malone too. said. I did, too. I thought he's, he's like, oh, okay. I thought he's definitely gone, and then the parade happens, and he's like, we're coming back. And, like, I got college basketball brain where, like, you just kind of commit to your school. Yeah, he's returning like, for like, yeah. another year. He's like, all right, he just announced he's coming back. That's cool. All right, yeah. we don't have to worry about this anymore. Well, it turns out uh, I think it was something like $4 million to return as opposed to, like, $30 million <laughs> right, to go right. somewhere else. And right. the most they could pay him was, like, $4 mil. Right. So, yeah, Bruce Brown is not loyal. Um, no loyalty in that no guy. Lo- yeah, yeah. Did not I, His commitment means nothing. Um, talk to me about Dan Snyder. I asked you one time. This was – I got I forget where, where – I, I remember where I was sitting in the lobby of the New York office. Oh, just hit my microphone. I'm um, sitting in the lobby of the New York office, and I remember uh, just making small talk with you. And I think like they had first announced that like Dan Snyder was looking into selling the team. Yeah. And I just kind of floated some to you, where I was just like, th- th- "You'd be happy about this, right?" And and you just crack your knuckles and you're like, "Boy, would I be happy!" And like you just talked for like 20 minutes about how much you hate this man. Yeah, he's um, he, he's been the worst. Magic Johnson is owning your team now. Yeah, we went from being like lame as shit to I think we're cool now. I don't know. I saw Magic Johnson dancing <laughs> to go-go music on Friday at, at the pep rally that they had for the team. And I was like, Hold, I, th- I don't know what this emotion feels like. I, yeah. I can't remember the last time where I felt like I was excited about the ownership of my team. Uh, yeah, And I'm there's, sure there's highs and lows. It, it, 76ers fans will tell you that they don't like Josh Harris that much. But he did oversee the process. That's what I'll say about Josh Harris. It takes a special kind of owner. Like a billionaire that that this that was his biggest project was the 76ers. Right. Forget all the other business dealings he had. Like he was focused on the Sixers. And what he did was he just hired a general manager and said, you do whatever you want to do. I'll give you the longest leash ever. I'll trust you. He trusted the guy that said, trust the process. So he. yeah. So, <laughs> so most owners, you, you get two years of the process and you still lose. And then most owners will be like, well, you got to change the process because I can't lose again. Controversial take. Uh, I think you could argue the process was a success insofar as it made the Sixers very, very relevant in a way that they had not been since Allen Iverson. And whether you were winning or losing or not, the fact that like free age, like the Sixers were always in the mix for free agents, the the Sixers, they, they just like were relevant. And then that, you know, like Philly fans don't want to hear that because, like, in Philly, they're thinking we either win titles or we're failures. Um, and, and there are certain fan bases that think that way. But I don't know. I, th- I think there is, like, a middle ground where it's, like, you took a franchise that, frankly, like, didn't have a lot going on. And for a while, like, you were the talk of the NBA. You have the MVP. Yeah, and now you have the MVP. And, like, yeah, you're never going to win a title. We all know this. Everybody knows that. Yeah. Joel Embiid knows this. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody knows this. But you're in the mix. That's fun. The process right? of the process worked. Yeah. If you're a real process guy, you can admit – the, the process, process of the process worked. The results. the results of the process. Listen, Markel Fultz, Ben Simmons developed vertigo right. or whatever. Uh, <laughs> there's some questionable results from the process, but if they had hit on those two picks, or if they had even only hit on one of those two picks, don't forget then- the the draft pick. Uh, the Sixers. I don't even know if this counts as a process draft pick, but uh, Zaire Smith. When they when they drafted Mikael Bridges, his mother worked for the team. He's, he played at Villanova. Then they immediately traded him to a guy who was allergic to sesame seeds and <laughs> ate like one hamburger and then like has him play basketball ever. I, I was, had completely yeah. Everybody about forgets that. about that one. I don't think I think that was post process technically, but uh, you know the, the process way, worked. The we, process is we, yeah. we can admit the process. The process is good. We judge a process based on the process. The, the process and the process. I, I follow it. So, like, if, if this is what the, the commanders – are we still going with commanders? Word on the street the is it's going to change. Uh, friend of the program, Stanford Steve, 
texted me earlier today. He got odds. He got odds on a um, on a name change, and apparently it's minus four fifty that they're going to change the team name. Wow! So that's that's a lot better than I thought. Because I hate the Commanders. The Commanders is terrible. It's such a bad name. Dan Snyder changed the name, and I, it, regardless of what anybody else told him to to name the team, he was going to name them the Commanders because he wants to court like the military contractors and ex-military guys. Yeah. And I mean, the NFL has deputized itself as another branch of the military at this point. So he wants to lean into that and say, okay, yeah, we're the most militaristic team in the NFL. <laughs> he thought that would translate into an upswelling of local support around the team. And we're like, no, this is stupid. This is stolen Valor. It is. I mean, yeah, you know, his entire really franchise st of yeah, stolen, stolen Valor <laughs> is what he did. So I'm, I'm glad that it seems like they're going to be changing the team name. And so I'm going to pull up the odds real quick here if I can find the text. Here we go. Uh, minus 400 that they will change the team name. So that's one to four odds plus 250 that they won't change it. And the betting favorite right now is the Spartans. No, don't, no. That would be the Cause dumbest Because of, of, ma of Magic, right? Magic's involvement, is that why? I hadn't thought about that. There's that At least there's a connection there. I thought that it but was... But I mean, that's not... There's no... It, it, that would be the most uncool thing Magic Johnson could possibly do is like become the owner of this football team and then say, I, I'm going to name them after, I'm going to use my influence to name them after. Yeah, that's stupid. That would be I lame. hate that. I, I agree with that. And the Spartans, it, you remember when the Raptors gave themselves the name the Raptors and it was because, because Jurassic because Park Because Jurassic Park, out? yeah. This is what you would do if you named a football team in like 2002 when 300 was Right, right, right. Yeah. We're just like 20 years late they to do the 300. The, the Washington Barbenheimers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right now, or just the Washington Barbies. Barbies. The Washington Barbies. <laughs> neon clothes and shit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've always said that uh, there needs to be a team named the Orcas or the Killer Whales. That's great. Just because the... The uniform scheme that you could get if you dressed them up like orcas. That's would be awesome. Awesome. That's awesome. Uh, probably not for Washington though. I feel like that's more of a Seattle thing. Yeah. Uh, the football team is seven to one, so they're the second favorite. Football team. I I loved football team. Yeah. I love football team from the start. I still think that foot, if they had been called the football team for the last hundred years, we would think that's like one of the coolest. If if they if they were called the football team and also had success, I should say that because that's the that's the difference between like things that are cool and not cool. Just like simply, are you good? And if if Washington if the Washington football team had won like six Super Bowls mm -hmm. over the last eighty years, everyone would think that's the coolest thing ever. Is that we don't need gimmicks, we don't need mascots, we don't need. You know, and they have like they have like jerseys that are like Alabama or Penn State, yeah. just boring ass. But we're here to play football, goddamn it. We're not here to like put on this dog and pony show. I don't need a cartoon bird yeah. telling me to yeah. cheer loud. Yes. You yes. know, like we're a football team. Our mascot, yeah. it, their mascot should be a football. Just literally a football <laughs> with <laughs> arms and legs. Yeah, yeah. We had we had Triggs design a football when they when they announced the rebrand of the football team. We told him just make a make a muscular football. So he drew a football with these big swole biceps that was pissed off and had eye black on. Yeah, it's a great mascot. It's very very cool. One of the things that I learned from the the Commanders and uh, other expansion teams, whenever they not the the Commanders expansion team, but whenever expansion teams in any sport come out, uh, you realize quickly that every every professional sports team name in this country is kind of stupid. Yeah, it's kind of stupid. The Green Bay Packers is a stupid name. Mm -hmm. If you really stop if, and think about it. If the it. Green Bay Packers came out now. Now, you'd be like, Packers? We're meat packing? Yeah, meat I'm, pa like, what, I mean, Steelers? What, like, come on. Mm -hmm. What are we doing here? You know? Um, but the, because, like I said, like if you win. And New you York have, Jets probably wouldn't work out yeah, so New hard. York Jets would be a horrendous name. Terrible name. name. For Sully? <laughs> because of the Sully thing? Right, exactly. Um, New York Giants would be awful. Absolutely. If, if, yeah. if a team came out in 2023 and said, okay, we are the New York Giants, yeah. give me a break. So I, th I think you have to like kind of think through that as like there kind of are no good options. That's why I think I love football team because I was like, no matter what you land on, you're going to like sit there and chew on it for a little bit and be like, I don't know, Spartans? Like what is it? But what's your favorite? What's the I one? like football team. I like football team a lot. I also like Hogs or the Red Hogs. Hogs is good. Because there's a tie-in to yeah. back when the team was good. You could do a lot of fun stuff with a pissed off like barnyard – like uh, what was it like a wild boar almost? Yeah. Or like you remember those toys you used to play with as kids, or at least I did. Barnyard warriors. Oh yeah. There were pigs yeah. that had the bazookas and shit on. Right. Them. That would be cool. How how cartoony do we want the logo though? Like is it or is it like a almost? Yeah, I think that's the question you got to like. Uh, that's where I'm at with hogs. Sounds cool, but I need to see because like 
Arkansas Razorbacks. Their nickname is kind of the Hogs. They, I think they have some cool logo. Like the the Razorback looks cool on the side of the football. Yeah, helmet. the actual Razorback, yeah. the animal. So with, with DC, I think it would probably be a little bit more cartoony. Like if it's back, Porky Pig, I don't know if I. I don't know. Back in like the the eighties and nineties, when we had that awesome offensive line, there were guys that used to get dressed up on Sundays mm-hmm. to go to the games. The Hogettes. Yeah. The premise behind this was. They were the wives of the football players, which is <laughs> totally – don't question it. It's manly as fuck yeah. to get dressed up as your favorite player's wife and then go to a game and cheer for him. And they would wear dresses. I remember seeing would, the beer, Ben Shapiro rant on those guys. I remember yeah. yeah, I remember back in the day when he did that. Yeah. Those guys rocked. It <laughs> yeah. was like fat guys with mustaches that would put yeah. on these hog noses and these big flowy dresses <laughs> and they go cheer for the team. And somehow it worked. Somehow it all worked. So I think it, you, when you think about the hogs, you think – about those guys too, right? With their the pig noses that they put on their faces, so it would have to be a little bit cartoony. But I don't know. I, I like the idea of that just because it's it's tied in. Then as an aviation fan, I'm a fan of the Red Tails, which is it's uh, I think a World War II squadron of fighter pilots. I think they were the yeah. first African American fighter. That's cool. Fighter squadron. That would be cool. Anything. But but the problem plane. with that is I think everyone's just gonna call them Redskin. It's that's gonna be like too close to where it's gonna take a while. Like, cause you're going to say red and then like, there's going to be a lot of commentators that are talking about the team yeah. and they're like, and of course, let's wa- welcome to Washington Redskins. Shoot. Did I just say that? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I, yeah. I can't believe I said that. Sorry, America. I meant red tails. <laughs> I feel like there'd be like a season or two of that. That still happens with the chargers. Yeah. The, you know, they call yeah. them the, the San Diego chargers, but so, I, yeah, I, w- I wouldn't mind red tails. There's a bunch of really shitty names on this list. The <laughs> owls, the Washington owls, I guess owls are kind of cool, but. Like what's the what's the connection? What's the, the Washington Magic is nine to one, Again. and as bad as that would be, the second choice. So it's Magic slash Magicians. <laughs> I almost want them to be the Washington, Washington magicians, magicians, just because that is the worst. I think that's that's, worse. that's worse than the Commanders. The, there's nothing less cool than a magician. <laughs> Right? Yeah, you're kind of right. You can't do anything good with that. You're kind of right. Uh, but Red Hogs is also also on there. Washington Monuments would be trash. And then they actually have the Washington Redskins at 50 to 1. To bring it back? Bring it back. We're saying that it again. Be, <laughs> We're saying that it again. Be something, dude. It would be something, dude. It would be a move that Dan Snyder would do. Dan Snyder would do that, yeah. But you can't, you can't go back. I don't think you can. Because there was one time when you saw... Originally, he, he was saying, I'll never change the name, and you can print that in all caps. Yeah. It will never be changed. And then uh, his his co-investors in the team, some of the minority owners, they said, well, we want out. We want to sell our share of the team because we don't want to do business with you anymore unless you change the team name. I think FedEx had something to do with that, maybe Pepsi. He was going to lose a lot of money. So his response to that was, okay, um, in that case, I will commission a study to determine whether or not well, the name Redskins is offensive <laughs> or not. And it, it would have been hilarious if he had come back and been like, results of the study you're in, Redskins is a good name. I asked a bunch turns out it's not offensive. <laughs> like, if you commission a study to study that, you can't, I, you can't say that we didn't find right, anything. Right, right, right. I mean, yeah, I, I went to the bar around the corner and asked all the white people there, are you offended by the name? And they well, were like, no. Mark, but a lot of those white people had, had Cherokee blood. That's true. So from their great-great-grandmother. Which is something I think everybody's that sold. would that would well yeah how do you handle that if uh if, if th- that's a, that would be a weird one but it would be on brand it would be on I I I'm 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 trying to think of like a scenario where somehow that term is deemed inoffensive like we're yeah you could say I, I potato know. people have been yeah, saying potato the potato for, for years the potato and years. but yeah it's uh it it's tough because it's a name that a lot of people grew up rooting for. Yeah. Not understand like it was the name of the football team, right? And there's a lot of memories that are tied into that name, and you don't stop and think every time you say it. Okay, well maybe there's some people out here that don't like it. It's just it's nostalgia. It's like yeah. the team was good when that's when they were called for the most part, and there's a lot that's tied in with that. And then there's also it's tough, man, because there's studies that come out. Like the Washington Post did a study that said 90% of Native Americans don't find the term offensive. Oh, really? And you don't know, each study varies. It's very right. between like 40 and 90%. And it's it's one thing to say, oh, well, 90% of them don't find it offensive. But if, like, I've talked to Native Americans that have told me, like, straight up, this is a slur. Yeah. What am I supposed to tell them? Well, actually, actually it's not, not, if you nine, out this, 10, yeah. nine out of 10 would disagree with you. On have, that you have you seen this study, though? Uh, yeah, let me show you this. Show you, this. you don't get the Washington that's, Post. That's where you're wrong. Um, but there is hope for the first time. 
Since when? When, when? when was the last time you were RG3. excited as a as a fan? RG3, yeah. yeah his, his where where does Washington – because so I had the Chicago guys on the show. Uh, that was my first show I did last, last – it was a week ago. Um, uh, uh, Chief and Eddie and, and Dave came on the show, and I asked them to, like, sum up where Chicago sports are at right now and, like, what the – like, are you hopeful at all? Is there, like, any part of you that's, like, Justin Fields, we think there might be some excitement and uh, – Who's the hockey kid? Bedard is Bedard, that? Yeah. yeah, Bedard. Like, is there is there like hope or is it just? And there and Dave was just like, it's dog shit. We're dog shit. Everything's dog shit, and and everything sucks, and everything's bad. Um, where where is what? Because like for me, and for for I'm assuming all the Washington fans, um, it has been a sad state of affairs. Washington sports, DC sports mm-hmm. are horrendous, but the Caps won, the, the Nats, Nats won. won, yeah. Uh, now there's some optimism with the commander slash hog slash Spartans, um, mm-hmm. whatever we're going to call them. Uh, wh- where, where are you at? Like as a, as a DC sports fan in general. Okay. So overall I'll have to do a team by team nationals. I'm at like a D if we're doing it like A to F grades right now. Yeah. So dog shit. I'll give dog, dog shit. shit to D, the for nationals. D for dog shit. We've got, we've got a good farm system apparently, but again, this is, goes back to like the NBA talk that we had earlier. People know way too much about it. The baseball freaks out there that the, the, understand the farm system, those stay far away from a baseball. I think, I think the baseball, I think the reason I don't mind it in baseball so much is that it just feels on brand for that sport. So like when I think the baseball dorks come out, I'm like, this is, this is, I don't, I, I don't love it, but it like, at least it fits. It makes sense in my head. The yeah. basketball dorks doing it. I, it's just like so counter to the culture of basketball in my mind, which is just like, just old dudes arguing in barbershops about how good guys are. And also baseball has a lot more stuff that you can just quantify because right. it's got, okay, each pitch is an individual play each at bat. You can Be- judge like power, all that before, stuff. Before like advanced metrics came along, it, it, even in the eighties and nineties, there were still a thousand baseball stats. Yeah. There were still a you know, like there in, in basketball, there weren't, there was like five, we had five stats. And then, so I think that's why it's a little weird now where baseball makes more sense. Cause you were always pointing to guys, RBIs or, you know, yeah. average or home runs and all that other stuff. I, um, I learned, um, I learned some, important stat it was really important last year when we made the trade for soto we sent him out to san diego we got got a bunch of their prospects back there's one guy that we got that had like the lowest chase rate (laughs) in the history of major league baseball farm systems so it's like this guy doesn't swing at balls and so i'm like okay we got the guy with the best chase rate i'm just i'm the chase rate king i'm just picturing growing up in hendricks county indiana and i'm out on the playground just like shooting baskets with my friends and like one guy's like dude you see the cub sign and i'm like no who they get in the farm system, we got a guy who's got the lowest chase rate. <laughs> all all of us would have beat the shit out of that kid. Would have been like, never come back to this. You got <laughs> such a good eye. You're such he's a goober, dude. What waits for his about? pitch. Yeah. So good at that. Yeah. Uh, maybe he's got great eyes. Maybe yeah. he actually has great eyes. Like umpires wouldn't call Ted Williams out on strikes if he didn't swing. That's yeah. Because they knew that knows, his yeah. eyesight was so much better than theirs. Yeah. Maybe he's that good. I saw a tweet the other day of some baseball nerd that was talking about Ellie De La Cruz from Cincinnati. Yeah. Just maybe the funnest player to watch. He's awesome. He's so good. And he had this one stat that was like, yes, he's having a great season by most statistical measurements, but he (laughs) does have like a team low. And I swear to God, it was like seven letters in a row. And bacon was in the middle. It was like X W R bacon X. <laughs> and, and this is very concerning and troubling to me. Yeah, the, maybe this is the brand <laughs> for Blake. The dog is uh baseball buzzkill Blake who like, you just like, <laughs> you retweet out all like, the, like, yeah. yeah anytime, Why is Shohei Otani bad? Yeah, to retweet a Shohei Otani home run and say bad launch angle. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah this like, is, it's not, not sustainable, not sustainable at, all. at all. He's, he's losing some, some velocity on his, <laughs> his, his exit velocity is, is showing some, some con- cause for concern. Uh, yeah. It does seem actually, Mark, you bring up a great point because uh, part of what we've really loved doing on part of my take is uh, we like to be the first to zig when everybody else zags. Yeah. So whenever somebody loves a player too much, you got to be a hater of that guy. Yeah, exactly. And there's no Shohei Otani haters. There I, are none. I think, there are none. I think we might have to be the first. That's a if great. If you'd like to join the bandwagon. I'll do it, dude. I did it with Victor Wimbenyama. I, uh-huh. I, I, I staked my claim, um, and, it, and it hurt me to do it. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm strategically playing both sides where I'm like, I don't want this to be the case. I'm sorry. Like, I'm rooting for the kid. But he's going to be a bust. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I just yeah. I, you yeah. say it that way. We're yeah. like, it hurts me more than you know. <laughs> I hope I'm wrong. I, I would love to be wrong. <laughs> I so badly want to be wrong. However, he's going to be a bust. However, I'm so smart that I know that I'm right about. Unfortunately, this. for everybody, <laughs> not the uh, case. What could you nitpick about Shohei? He's uh, his strike zone's big. Yeah, as a batter, 
Yeah. He's a big guy. Um, His shoulders, there might be something. He's got those big, broad shoulders. Maybe inefficient know, <laughs> uh, generation of velocity. He plays swing. for the Angels. I mean, start there. Like, bad picking of teams. Like, you couldn't Google MLB teams before you chose your team. Like, it, you could have – 30 seconds of Googling could have told you don't sign with the Angels. Yeah. And he – you couldn't do that, so obviously he's you can not, call him a ring chaser. Just right. whenever, wherever he decides to sign. But why did he want to team up with? He, he obviously went to the Angels because he wanted to team up with Trout. So he is sort of it's very Kevin Durant of him to like, you know, he, that, that's probably what happened. Was he probably turned to his management team and was just like, who's the best player in baseball? And they were like Mike Trout. He's like, I want to play with him. Yeah, he's probably scared of yeah. of Ichiro's shadow. Yeah, he probably didn't want to go to Seattle. That's I mean, they exactly want him right. in Seattle. He doesn't want to be compared to Ichiro. He he doesn't think he'll be great. He's so fun. I I, I he he is. I, I I saw the highlight. Uh, I I forget how long ago it was, but there's like a highlight of him just like hitting a foul ball where he just like hits the piss out of the ball and it's foul. Yeah. And I was I watched it like thirty times. Where yeah. it just like the sound it makes is just like insane. It, it sounds different <laughs> off his bat. Yeah, yeah. It really it's been does. a while since we've had a guy like that. It really does. Uh, do we miss steroids in baseball? Yeah, absolutely. I think we do. Right. We we definitely miss steroids in baseball, and and the game. The way that it's played right now is just it, it should be played in the steroid era where it's just dingers only. I was I went to the Cubs game yesterday, uh uh sun, the Sunday afternoon Cardinals game, and I sat in the bleachers. It's the first time I've sat in the bleachers in like ten years. And um I I was walking on Waveland, which is the left field. Uh if you hit it over left field, you're hitting it on the Waveland Avenue. Yep. And it was I just, just like all the memories of Sammy Sosa bombing home runs out of the, like it was just like a core memory in 1998 to see on tv a million people on waveland avenue with their gloves waiting to catch like historic sammy sosa homers and i just got the wave of nostalgia of like well first of all they got to get rid of the scoreboard in left field and like make it to where you can knock knock him out of the park in wrigley but it was just like man we need steroids back so badly we, we need like that was so fucking cool that was such like a an awesome time but um it was I, that, that's this isn't a unique point of view but it's just like it it, it is very bizarre that that yeah i don't know i that, that that this is what made baseball so popular but then they turned around and they're like shame on all of you yeah for, for as bud selig was quietly encouraging it. he's like yeah. i need these ratings so bad after the strike mm -hmm. and you had you had jacked up home run hitters and then you had just roided out uh closers yeah <laughs> and i don't think i don't <laughs> right. feel like the roided out closers get as much love as they should yeah but there was a while probably like a 10-year span in baseball you knew that your your closer was going to sprint out of the bullpen. Right. He was going to have that mustache, the mustache that connects to the goatee. Right. And then he was going to be pissed off, step on the mound, and just throw gas. Yeah. And that's all you were going to get. And it was the era of uh, of your Eric Gagne's. Ga Eric Gagne, Brian Wilson. John Not, Rocker. Say yeah. what you want about John Rocker, but I disavow his comments <laughs> in Sports Illustrated. But, Separate the art from the artist. <laughs> yes. That dude threw gas. He, yeah. And he, he had... These uh, what are these muscles called? The ones that are at the top of the shoulders? Uh, the those delts? delts. The he, delts. Yeah. His delts connected to his earlobes. Yeah. He had tachyo spikes, volcano neck. It was awesome, dude. It was it was so good. And I then, think I think they should do. There should be one team that uses steroids, and now granted, MLB would never go for it. Yeah. But we could put them in the league with the Savannah Bananas. <laughs> right. So the Savannah Bananas have to play, uh, I don't know, like ten games a season against the Rochester Roidheads. Roy. <laughs> How awesome would that be? I was thinking, and then you get – so they're going to hit dingers, right? But if your fans catch the home run ball, then that counts as an out. I, my, my, my galaxy brain, minor league baseball, exhibition, whatever, you know, Savannah, banana type line of thinking, uh, I, I think there should be one night in, in – we'll say single A because I think you start to get to double, triple A. Maybe it's a little too serious. One night a year in single A – where um, the ball when, when the opposing this is the dumbest idea I've ever had, but we're we're here now, so I'm gonna say it. The when the opposing team is up to bat or no, yeah, it, it, when when any team's up to bat, every ball is fair basically. Every okay. there, there's no such thing as a foul ball. So when when the opposing team is up to bat and they hit a foul ball into the stands or they hit a home run, the ball is live and the fans now have to throw it back in and try to tag the guy out of second or third or whatever. I like that. But when the home team hits the ball. Like they can play keep away and just like like they hit a foul ball into the stands, the the fans can just take it and chuck it out of the ballpark. <laughs> yeah, and, and you, then the guy runs around the bases and it's a home run. You kind of describe cricket a little bit, I think. <laughs> I where think there's that's no what cricket there's is. No, yeah. yeah, and the pitcher should be able to bounce the ball. <laughs> yeah, right. and it counts as a strike. I just invented cricket. Cricket does sound like a sport I would like to get into at some point. Um, I I would like to see. You know what I'd like to see? Steroids in the Little League World Series. That would be awesome. <laughs> let the kids just, just let the kids. I think that's just. 
puberty. I think yeah. it's just like it's just that's some that's of these God's, guys are either ju- yeah they're juicing off that God dope. God God invented steroids and it's puberty. Um, Russia or or, or there's like a how what is franchise tagging? That's another CBA thing that I don't I don't quite understand. Yeah, well, you get to tag one player and be like, this is our steroids guy. And and the Yankees have to decide: Is it Aaron Judge? Is it Giancarlo Stanton? Mm-hmm. Is it Anthony Rizzo? Who do you want to be the the steroids guy? And there's one guy on every team that's allowed to take steroids. I, I like that to idea t- too. <laughs> a little bit of steroids would would go a long way <laughs> to helping. Instead, Rob Manfred's like, let's make the bases a little bit bigger. <laughs> Let's, let's let's put the, ster- put the steroids clock. into the bases. Let's put a runner on second in the tenth inning. Uh, I I do think that um, when it comes to where was I was. Had something else I was going to dovetail off that last thing you just said. We're talking about oh yeah, franchise tag yeah. and how that's applied in, in like the NFL. That's a conversation that we don't really have that much. Is why does the franchise tag even exist? It's yeah. become so ingrained into like when we talk about basketball, we talk about all these different types of trades and contracts guys can have, and it's become like that in football, where really it's just a way for running backs to get fucked. Yeah, and there's really <laughs> yeah. the, the fran- if if we're going to be a capitalist society. Their market value is whatever a team will pay for them. Right. And the salary cap is another way of keeping salaries. You know, it, it's to keep the league con, uh, competitive. That's what they say it's for. And I think it kind of does that where in the NFL, you get teams that pop up every now and again, small markets, they do good. That's fun for everybody. I think it is good for the league. But with a franchise tag, it's just so that owners don't have to give out long-term contracts yeah. to a guy that they think, okay, here's a running back. He might not be good in two years, so let's just – Let's tag him. Uh, yeah, I well, one of the first ever like whoa, that's deep. I'm, when I was 14 years old, moments for me was when I I someone pointed out that um, that America is very capitalistic society, yet our pro sports team are socialist and communist, and there's salary caps, and there's only so much you can pay guys, and all that sort of thing. And then mm-hmm. Europe's the opposite, and I was like, whoa, whoa, that you can, <laughs> whoa, yeah. whoa, that's deep. That's Saudi crazy. Arabia can buy your best <laughs> you players buy, if they have yeah. enough money. Whoa, that's crazy. Whoa, it is crazy. Um, how much do you how much do you mourn the the? I mean, that's where that seems to be the NFL discourse right now is like the 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 running back stuff and. How much does, you know, I know you're a fullback guy. That's part of your brand. Fullbacks have been gone for a while. But they've been gone for a but while. But they made a comeback how much? How much, like, in all seriousness, do you think that this is, like, do you think this is, like, a, a sad moment for football? Do you think this is, like, a whatever, you know, like, it's just, like, part of life? Like, what, like, what are your feelings towards where we're at where, like, running backs are getting paid nothing and don't matter anymore? So, so by the letter of the law and the way that the contracts are drawn up, it makes sense. It makes complete sense. Yeah. Where you can get a guy and keep him for three years in his prime, which for running backs is like 25, 26, 27 years old. And you hear about a running back being 28 and you're like, ew. Yeah. Yeah. That guy's yeah, ancient. Yeah. You know, get him out of here. Uh, and it, w- it would make sense because their productivity does decline big time after that age. So it kind of sucks. But maybe it's just like we remember sports in a different way because everyone remembers sports the way that it was when they were growing up. Right. And so, yeah, there were great – the bell cow running back. Every right. team had to have a great running back if you wanted to compete. And now you just don't. You know, The way that the game's played right now, you don't need a great running back at all. So, unfortunately, the way that everything's working, they don't really have a lot of leverage unless you take away the franchise tag. In that case, yeah, you can get – a running back can, can produce for a couple of years, get paid at least one season where they're making great money. Um, and then they get a chance to hit the uh, – well, now it's like – you get paid one year where you're making good money on the franchise tag. And yeah. that one year, the drop off is so sharp between like 26, 27, 28 that they don't really, you will never give a big multi year deal to a 28 year old running back. Yeah. But you would give a big deal to a 27 year old running back, maybe, or a 26 year old. You could give him like three or four years. So just get him to free agency faster is, is the way that I think that it should be. But um, it's been, I'd say, the last like 15 years. It's pretty much been unless you're one of the top two, three running backs in the league, um, you got to be able to catch the ball. So yeah. you just become useful in the passing game too, and those have been some of the best running backs that we've had. It's just a, an evolution it's, of the game where I don't. It's not going to go back because it's based around the ultimate goal, which is to get more ratings and more money for the league. Right. And the league knows passing brings right. in money, right? So like high scoring games, nobody wants to watch a seventeen to ten game. But they'll watch a, a fifty to forty game and they'll love it. And if every game gets to be like that, then that's good for the yeah. bottom line. So we're gonna make all our rule changes to favor quarterbacks, wide receivers, and kind of leave the running backs. And this out is of it. what the NBA did 
10 years ago and then they've turned it up to 11 where it's like if, if there's a game that's 160 to 150 they tell everybody that was the greatest basketball game ever and, yeah <laughs> you know look how good these guys are um is there a world though because the, the, the comparison between running backs and big men in the nba seems pretty astute i would say you know like that seems to be a good um comparison here and there's like a I don't know how I, would, I, I like a counter thought or like a, a maybe it's just people holding out hope that there could be a world in basketball where as everybody becomes so perimeter oriented and everybody becomes so jump shot oriented and all this sort of thing that if there is a modern day Shaquille O'Neal that comes along um, and and guys, other teams don't have def- like nobody's used to seeing this. It's been 20, 30, 40 years since we've seen a force like this in basketball because every big man coming up now wants to shoot threes and wants to put the ball on the floor and holy shit, there's a guy that's just ripping the rim off and, you know, bullying everybody. Um, maybe there's a world where the NBA could pivot back because y- you got to find like the, the thing that other people aren't doing. Do you think there could be, a, like, could there be like a, an Adrian Peterson type guy or like a Derrick Henry would probably be the, the candidate now where like Derrick Henry bucks the trend where it's like Derrick Henry's 34 years old and he's, pushing 2000 yards somehow. And like, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just like hypothetically trying to think of a situation where like every defense is because passing is so predominant in football that every defense is built to stop passing that like, there's one coach out there that's like, fuck it. We're going back to the eighties and nineties and we're running it down teams throats. Cause they're not going to have, you know, a middle linebacker that can meet us in the the gap and, and stop this running back. I think we just have to wait for the Steelers to do it. Yeah. Get it would be the Steelers. Steelers it would be Steelers. Yeah. They just got to spend all their draft picks on interior linemen. Yeah. Get an awesome running back. Running fullback traps and shit. Fullback traps. Yeah. Yeah. Break up the old school playbook. Dust it off. Zig well everybody else. Yeah. I think um, the Steelers would either have to do it or, I mean, in basketball, the the reason why the game changed is because like 10 years ago, they remembered that three points is worth more than two. Steph Curry taught us all that. Yeah. Yeah, Nobody had any idea. We forgot (laughs) it. And that's a a big difference. Yeah. So you got to make, I don't know, like uh, running back touchdowns. If you run the football, running back touchdowns are worth eight. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, or they're worth they're worth seven, and then the extra point brings it to eight. So it's yeah. like a touchdown with a two po- with an easier two point conversion. Whatever happened with football? I, I remember football was dying. I remember. F- yeah, <laughs> do you remember that? Yeah, football remember, was dying. Football was dead. I remember like everyone, uh, all the nerds in the world were like, "I don't want my kid playing football." And if my kid's not playing football, what's going to happen in twenty years when they need people to play football? And then mm-hmm. guess what? My kid's not playing. So there goes football. Obama, that was, Obama's hypothetical son would not be allowed. He would to play not. Football. Yeah, they asked him. Like, remember you, when that was? Yeah, yeah, of course you remember. And then now nobody talks about that anymore. Well, how, how did the NFL do this? Roger did, Goodell. He's just, just, he's he's done more to solve concussions than anybody else on the face of the planet, except for probably Tom Brady, who just said drink. Drink enough water, and that's I'm not, why I don't get concussed. Maybe we should cut this part because I'm really like I'm very pro football. I am not uh, as John Gruden <laughs> anti football <laughs> pussy. Yeah, yeah, I'm not a. I, I, I am not that. Uh, so I don't want to come across as that. Uh, I just find it fa- like that. I, re- I just remember that was like what you talked about with football was like these concussions are going to do. There's going to be a. Uh, there's going to be a future where Congress is going to step in. They're going to say that if you are under 18 years old, you cannot legally play football. It's too barbaric. It's too gruesome. This was what people talked about. Somewhere, yeah, 2012, 2013. That was somewhere along the line. It was like a snap of a finger. Everyone's like, "Eh, fuck all that." We we, we were we were joking. We don't care. Well, and, but if you still watch football, there's still guys getting concussed like crazy. Yeah, yeah, they're down. I don't know, like 10 percent. But they've they just they're you still like if you're a high school kid playing football. I don't know if those concussions are down. Yeah, I think so. I go back to when I was a kid playing youth sports. With football, it was very different from every other sport. I grew up in the 90s. Uh, We talk about the 90s right now like it was forever ago when it comes to medical advancements. You hear people say all the time, like, well, knowing what we know now about about concussions (laughs) and traumatic brain injuries, we can say we're doing things wrong in the 90s. I played basketball. I played baseball. I played soccer. I played football growing up. Football was the only sport where the coaches were like, fuck that, get back in the game. Yeah. It yes, was like, yes, it was a culture thing around yes, football. Yes. In soccer, I remember I was a goalie. I hit my head on the post one time. I got a concussion and the coach came out and he was like, you're concussed, you're out of the game. Right. I couldn't practice for like a week and a half, two weeks until I felt better. Uh, in other sports, basketball, I had teammates that got concussions. They were out of the game. They didn't get put back in. Football was the only sport where they were like, rub some dirt on it. Right. It wasn't, it wasn't really a medical science issue. We knew... Everybody knew concussions I mean, were bad at the time. Yeah. And so the NFL, uh, they got themselves into a lot of hot water because they 
basically tried to bury the evidence of it. Yeah. So that's that's bad. That's like 2012, 2013. That's when the settlement came out. When they were like, okay, everyone that's ever played football, get here's fifty bucks or whatever. Yeah, here's, here's class yeah. action. Um, here's a, here's a fifty dollar gift card to the NFL store. Yeah, exactly. We'll get you. We'll, we'll have a doctor stop by your house. Uh, but it was that at that point, people were very mad at the NFL, and they were like, well, what are you going to do to fix the concussion problem? And you're never going to fix the concussion problem in football. It's right. uh, you can you can do things to make it better. I guess they're trying to take the big hits out of the game. I think. Personally, and also, I, I didn't start playing rugby until I was in college. So that was mid two thousands. In rugby, same thing. They knew yeah. if you have a concussion, you're out of the game. Yeah, we got to take you out. And I, obviously, some guys would lie about that and try to get back in or whatever. But um, rugby has a, a smart rule where if you make a tackle, if you're trying to tackle somebody, you have to make an attempt to wrap your arms around them. You have to try to wrap up. Yeah, you can't go flying in with a shoulder Just, or yeah. a forearm unless it's rugby league, which is a different kind of sport but um when you see 15 on 15 rugby you have to try to wrap your arms around them and that is a good natural way of, of trying yeah. to take some of the big head-to-head -head collisions out of it. that makes a ton of sense actually yeah that i i that that that, w that does seem like it would be a well, i mean I, I know next to nothing about it but yeah i i think back on my football career in high school i got a thousand concussions i mean like it was it was crazy and that was the first time in my yeah, the first time I ever heard the phrase "Are you hurt or are you injured?" was a football coach. It yeah. was not. A, I love that. My basketball coach never, you know, it was just like, "Can you play?" And like, I was like, "I don't." Yeah, and they're like, "All right." So you know, like you'd sprain your ankle even. And they'd be like, "Can you go?" And I'd be like, "I don't." I, yeah, I don't think I can put weight on it. They're mm -hmm. like, "All right, cool, moving on." I, football I, coach is the one sitting you down, like, "Son, this is less about this football game and it's more about your life." Yeah. Like, is this who you want to be? Yeah, <laughs> you, you know, have a decision you, to make right, yeah, now right now of what kind of person you want to be. And I'm like, I'm the fucking punter. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and this this like high school football coach was concerned about his own job. Yeah, right, right. Like, he's like, are they yeah, gonna hire me yeah. again next year? I need you. Yeah, I gotta I get this 15 year old back in the I game need you ASAP. Back in, I, need you. I had some hilarious uh, high school football coaches. I every now and again, like once every couple of years, I'll, I'll just ask people to send me their their funniest stories of things yeah. that their high school football coaches tried to teach them in practice and <laughs> different shit they'd pull off. Uh, one of my high school football coaches, who's a wide receivers coach. This is like maybe second, third week of practice. It was still training camp in the summer. And uh, our coach has given us a big speech at the end of practice. Everyone's on a knee. Take a knee, boys. We all took a knee. Probably said a prayer for some reason. Uh, and then he started talking to us about, about what we need to do better. And our wide receivers coach just stood up behind him and just took his nutsack out <laughs> and just started going, ah, ah, wiggling his nuts at all of us. And so we all started cracking up. And then after like 30 seconds, our coach turns around and the guy puts his nuts away and our coach didn't see it. And then he turns around, keeps talking to us, breaks the balls out again. And then after that practice, we're like, dude, he's hilarious. That guy's so funny. And then you get a little bit older. You're like, that was a, a 27 year old just right. was taking their nuts out and showing it to a bunch of 15 year olds. Yeah, That's kind of weird. It's best to not revisit the adult, the cool adults at your high school now uh, when you now that you're an adult you yeah. know like it's best to just like keep that memory locked as like that guy was cool because if you revisit it it is it's it is alarming weird. it's kind well, of that, alarming that guy was also like a substitute teacher and i think he got uh he got fired for dating a student so yeah yeah we Check, had, like one of the out. one of the cool guys at my high school one of the cool teachers at my high school he, he was cool he wasn't like those other teachers yeah he was one of the cool ones uh banged multiple students <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so weird <laughs> and, it's so uh, weird thinking about and, like, and honestly i mean I hate this about myself, but when you hear, like, when I was a senior in high school and I, you know, I was the guy that was like, nice. You know? yeah. like, I was like, damn. I was like damn, dude, that's pretty fucking sick. That dude's got mad he's games. Like, he's got, <laughs> like, I've been trying to bang those girls for years, yeah. dude. You just, <laughs> chicks love older That's dudes. respect. Yeah. Uh, there's another high school football coach story, a, a famous one, it goes viral from time to time. This guy, uh, he tried different motivational stunts to get his team up for their biggest games of the season every year. And uh, they got pr progressively stranger and stranger. And one year he had uh, students get into a fake fight in the hallway <laughs> in front of his team while his team was like in a meeting. And he goes out in the hallway and like breaks them up. And then he has one of the students take out a gun and shoot him. And it was a cap gun. But it, this is a motivational stunt. <laughs> and then he like puts fake blood on him. <laughs> and then he, his students like call 911 because they're like, oh shit, what, our coach just got shot. And then he like stood up and wiped himself off. He's like, you got to be willing to do whatever it takes. <laughs> and he got fired after that one. He's like, yeah, I might, I might've gone a little bit too far. 
And maybe the worst part was he, so it was a majority white school. He got one of the only black students in the entire school to be the kid that pretended that to sh- shoot oh my God. in the hallway. And he was trying to teach his kids a lesson about life, Mark. We were trying to learn about being a good person or a bad person and what that means on the football field as well as the football field of life. Isn't that an arrested development? Uh, Gene, uh, is it Parmesan? Is that his last? Like, wasn't there like a arrested, like where they, they taught the, the kids? Yeah, I don't know. I haven't seen arrested development in ages where you just fake deaths and then you're like, aha, <laughs> just kidding, not yeah. dead. Yeah. yeah. He what al- if I was? <laughs> this guy also uh, faked a heart attack in front of his kids like a couple years before. <laughs> This is great. This is, you should do. Have you ever like done a podcast? Like you should just do like a. That's off season content, dude. It's just like have everybody write in, share the stories, and then just read them all on the show. And you best, guys should just riff on them. Yes, best. That's, that's best great PMT stories. content. It is. It is good, and I love all of them. I love all of them so much. Um, I think we were. I think I'd asked you about Washington sports, and then we went on like a crazy tangent. Oh yeah, you so said, so you D, said dog yeah. shit for the Nationals, right? Uh, Capitals get a C for kind of crappy, but. Um, yeah, we got Ovechkin to watch, which is nice. Yeah. So at, at the like, I would like to have Ovechkin win another Stanley Cup at the end of his career. Probably not going to happen. But worst case scenario, I get two, three more years of watching him chase Gretzky's goal record. Are you a believer in the uh, uh, grace period after a title? Like, yes, if, if you want a title, you're not allowed to bitch about your team for yes. X number of years. For sure. I'm yeah. firmly in that camp with, yeah. the, with the Capitals right now. Yeah, I wanted it for so long. I got it. I can't complain about it anymore. I just I didn't want Ovi to retire having been like the Dan Marino where it's like yeah, yeah. he never did you anything. got the one and the, the, I mean, eventually you're going to want another one you're like all right it's been long enough but yeah I was just, I'm the same way with the Cubs they won in 2016 at this point it's been seven years so you're starting to be like am I you're, you're popping your head back up and you're like am I allowed to say we should be better and this well is, it sucks for the Cubs that the way they dismantled that roster that was it but the, what really sucks about it beyond them giving up all the guys is that they were right about like basically every guy. Yeah. <laughs> like that, that's what like, cause I think as fans, you want to be like, why, why did we do this? You know, you'd be mad at the front office, but when they're right and they set the price like that, I don't know. I, I, I hate that they were right about like all these guys because I had the feeling I would rather lose with guys. I love almost than not, not fully, but like, I would rather, if, if we're not going to win the world series, I would rather like not make the playoffs with all the dudes that won the world series yeah. for us. You know what I mean? I'd rather go down with the ship with my guys than you know, you can't stay mad at those guys. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. Then finish second in the division every year with a bunch of like dudes that like, you know, their ex bacon is better than, yeah, you know? we've got the nationals. Uh, they were wrong about every person. So when you look, <laughs> maybe not Anthony Rendon, cause he's been injured for the most part, but when you look around the league, it's, it's very sad. You yeah. can see like Juan Soto is still a fucking monster. This season he's been down a little bit, but he's still Juan Soto. He's young. He's going to be incredible. Uh, Trey Turner. Yeah. Still awesome player. There's just a bunch of guys that we got rid of where I would very much still like to have them yeah. on the Washington nationals, but I'm going to give C for kind of crappy to the capitals. Um, yeah, we're going to, we're going to watch Ovi try to chase down Gretzky. That's going to be fun. I also learned today that Ovi's dog is also named Blake. No. Yeah. Kinda you, that's there we go. pretty cool, right? That's cool. So, uh, I'll give a C to the capitals and then, um, uh, w for who cares to the Wizards. <laughs> I was this close, Mark. I was this close to becoming a diehard Wizards fan again during the draft lottery when the Wizards had like a 60% chance when it came down to it yeah. to get Wimby. And then they lost on the last lottery ball. Yeah. That was, t- I mean, the NBA, if we're being honest, probably should not have allowed Wimby to go to DC. I, yeah. But there, I don't think, here's, here's a good question. Can you name a more irrelevant franchise? In any sport except hockey, because there's a bunch of irrelevant franchises in hockey. In baseball, basketball, football. A team that's been more irrelevant to the conversation, the national conversation around the league, in the last five years than the Washington Wizards. I'm trying to think of who the candidates would be. Um, The Oakland A's, but they're moving, uh, and now people are actually talking about them. Yeah. no, I, I I think the Wizards are in a uh you're, you're absolutely there's like nothing interesting about them at all. It's not even they're not even so bad they're interesting. No. It's not even one of those deals. Um, you could yeah, until no, this year you could have said maybe the Kings. Ki- yeah, yeah, Kings yeah, yeah. The Kings are are very much. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know who the like the Pistons are, but the Pistons. They got the, some they, nice they, young yeah, pieces. They got some nice young pieces now, and they got the number one pick. And like, yeah, the Pistons are exciting. Uh, yeah. Basketball, it's definitely the Wizards because 
Who cares? Who cares? Yeah. Who cares? And it's sad because, well, it's not really. Like, the Wizards, they were always definitely, like, my fourth favorite team or third favorite team before we got the Nats growing up. Yeah. But um, I thought of a team, the Vancouver Whitecaps. I would say they're – I would say they're <laughs> – the MLS, yeah, yeah MLS, yeah. 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 Oh, good you, point. You, yeah, you good point. I, I had to do a second. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I was, is that the okay. cricket team? Uh, yeah, no, that's a, yeah. The Wizards. That, that's that's like the worst. That that purgatory is like the worst spot to be in because it's almost like more. Uh, it's not, but like you, you want to romanticize it. It's almost better to just be like so dog shit that that's your brand. Like the Browns, for example, yeah. that are just like they've been they've been horrible forever. But like the, that's that's the brand of the the Browns, and like it's just like this constant cycle of like talking yourself into maybe we'll get over the hump whatever i think if you're really that bad there's almost like a pride that develops within your right. fan base right where you say to everybody i'm i'm a loyal fan i come out through thick and thin i'm gonna be here when you're just like the wizards have been where they're bad but they're not grossly bad then they're boring bad and if so the you wizards, don't even have that, that if the wizards base. miraculously made the eastern conference finals next year i still don't think anybody in dc would care anybody like nationally would care they would just be like all right cool whatever like I, like it would take it would almost like take like the number one pick winning a tie like I, it's got to be something seismic like that like you got to win a title now somehow which isn't going to happen anytime soon get the number one yeah if they would have got Wimby that would have that would have done it to like make some sort of excitement but yeah change the name I back don't know. to the bullets change the name back to the bullets uh Dan Snyder buys the Wizards yeah <laughs> good go for it Dan yeah. <laughs> like, this is a Washington Redskins <laughs> yeah have, yeah you get yeah, change them to the change Redskins. Redskins there we go yeah. fulfill all your wildest yeah. dreams I do think that what they're doing this year is it's kind of smart I don't know you yeah. probably don't follow along that closely with Wizards I'll forgive you if you don't uh, yeah I've they got been. a GM uh their new GM is from he, Oklahoma City by way of uh the Clippers mm -hmm. so he knows he makes moves and he knows how to assemble a competent basketball team I think and uh, what they did this offseason, Chris Paul, wizard for life. <laughs> he had a great stay in D.C. Uh, but then they got Jordan Poole, which I like because if you're going to be – Jordan Poole is a perfect guy to have as your number one option on a team that you want to absolutely destroy. Right, He's right. going to score 35 right. points a game at times, and they're going to win like 25% of their games. Great tanking number one option. Yeah. yeah he's, he's going to be entertaining. He's going to have uh, one or two games where he, he scores 40-plus. In a loss. And, yeah, in a loss. Yeah. And you're just like, this, is, this guy's awesome. He's uh, going to have wildly inefficient 40-point games yeah. at, at times. Uh, but, yeah, it's, it's, if you're going to be bad, be really bad. And I think that we're, we're trying to be really yeah. bad. Yeah. Um, so who does that leave? Then we talked about the commanders. The yeah. commanders, I put I put hope in the commanders at an A, A yeah. plus. I'm giving it A plus hope. That's exciting. It is. It's and, exciting. And talk to me in a year, I'll probably be like, okay, well, B plus. I'll downgrade it by then. Yeah. But at this point, where it's like we're fun, we've got we've got a quarterback uh, in Sam Howell that probably won't be good. But if he's good, how awesome would that be? Yeah. <laughs> like he was. People forget Stephen Che. I'm gonna. I'm putting this entire season on Stephen, Stephen Che. Stephen Che, yeah. Stephen Che ranks Sam Howell as his number one overall draft pick, right after the previous draft had ended. So his way too soon look way ahead too, draft. Yeah, yeah. He had Sam Howell number one. So let, we go by Stephen Che's metrics on the Washington Commanders. If if Sam Howell's a bust, I'm blaming all my misfortune on him. Uh, now that you're a Chicago resident, and I guess this this could have applied to New York, but I feel like New York and DC have more. I, I might be talking about yeah, talk, talking out of my ass, but I feel like on the East Coast, it's a little more sacrilege to do what I'm going to ask. Um, but now that you're a Chicago resident, does any part of you want to root for the local teams? Not to say, yeah. not to say get rid of your teams. I'm not saying it's going to supersede. I'm just saying, are you going to have a soft spot for the bears and the bulls and the Blackhawks and the Cubs and white Sox? And I think that's all the Blackhawks definitely okay. because they play in, in the other conference. So they're out they're in the West so I can root for them. Okay, I can root for the Blackhawks. I'll feel good about that. Which is pretty. That's a cool old school NHL deal where the the Blackhawks are still West Western Conference. They like stuck yep. with that, and it makes zero sense when you look at a map. But and if I squint real hard, I'm like, is this the Redskins? And, yeah, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, yeah, maybe unless they go woke. Yeah, that's actually so you can make the argument. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt turned football into the woke football that we see today because too many guys were dying of concussions yeah i forget how many college kids died of concussions these poor guys because they were just playing like ram your head into the other guy's neck football and so everyone there were a bunch of deaths and then teddy roosevelt was like okay we need to change some of the rules that happened nowadays but teddy went woke yep. we're boycotting we're gonna we're gonna bud you like the never, NFL. yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the concussion deal not to i mean we can't we don't need the to, to belabor it but i i, I will say 
one of the more bizarre experiences as a sports fan where I like disassociate and I'm like, man, if aliens were observing us, I, I can't imagine how confused they would be is like an opening kickoff. A guy gets lit up returning the kick and he's just laying on the ground. He's can cut like whatever. It's like a serious injury. Everyone's like on one knee, you know, like the helmets are off. We're on a knee. We're waiting. They put the guy on a stretcher and they, they wheel him off the field and every single time the fans will start clapping mm -hmm. when you have no, we, we don't have any sign whether this guy is good or not. Maybe the thumbs up. You might get the thumbs Maybe up. Maybe you'll give a thumbs up, which like I get you clap at that, but there, I, this happens every single football season, two or three times that I see where like a guy, like we don't have any, we have no idea whether this guy is good or not, like in terms of his health and everybody's clapping. And I always think like, what must aliens observing think that like everyone's clapping get this fucker off the finally get him off yeah. the field so we can get back to football <laughs> yeah. you know or they must feel and like so i don't want to fuck with these people yeah yeah these, these guys, guys are, are these guys are maniacs um anyway I, I i have that i'm i'm going to have that thought at some point this football team but anyway uh yeah teddy roosevelt um would have canceled football it's he would have like, canceled football for sure yeah uh i because I, I i mentioned to, to dave white Sox dave is th this might be a shock to you he did not exactly have like a progressive thought on this or like a kumbaya thought on this um but i mentioned that as a cubs fan i think i will have a soft spot for the white Sox because not that i'm a white Sox fan but and i'm gonna cheer for the white but like i've never really fully understood the You're white john Sox. cusack yeah that, that's what that's what brought yeah, it up was john like talking cusack. about john cusack because i was like i don't can you explain to me, Dave, what the problem was? I'm new to Chicago. Like, is there really a rivalry? I didn't really – when I was growing up, they never played each other, literally did not play each other because they were in American League, National League. Mm -hmm. um, and he was like, you can't do that. you got to pick your team, and the other team doesn't. And I was like, but can't some part of you be like, I, you know, all things being if – the, if the White Sox are playing the Dodgers in the World Series, why can't I cheer for the local boys over, like, those assholes in L.A., yeah. you know? Um, what do you think? I mean, I'm. Is I'm, that? That's. It sounds reasonable. <laughs> but, I, but that's I the just, problem. Is sports fandom. Once, not you, once yeah. you bring reason into sports fandom, you've, you've lost. You it know, sounds. So. Re people always talk about if they if they can change what team they root for. Mm -hmm. Like if if you are a city that's gone through a lot of bad losses, I'm not going to say the Falcons by name, but if you are a Falcons fan, <laughs> can you stop rooting for the Falcons and start rooting for and another find a team? different team? I'm. I don't think that your heart will ever truly be in it if you really did grow up yeah. a Falcons fan. You have to either buy property in that city, or actually, you should have to go to jail in, for a year. <laughs> Just go to jail. Yeah. If you want to, if you want to change up from being a Falcons fan to, let's say, being a Saints fan, if you want to mm -hmm. switch intra division, intra division seems like it'd be tough. You should have to go that to jail tough. in yeah. New Orleans for one year, and then you can come out and now you can be a Saints fan. There should be a punishment. But when it comes to rooting for two teams from the same city, I, yeah, I mean, it does sound reasonable. But is your heart? Would your heart? truly be in rooting for the White Sox? It would not. It was just more of like a, all things being equal. The Cubs are out of the playoffs. You're rooting for the local I'm party. I'm rooting for the local boys. You're rooting like, for I'm, the city. Yeah, yeah, I'm rooting for the city. I'm rooting for... Okay. Because I, I adopted this when I moved to LA that uh, I noticed that the city... Like when I moved to Los Angeles, the Lakers... I'm not saying it's me. A lot of people are. If you want to continue to say it, I'm not going to stop you. But I don't think it was me. But as soon as I moved to LA, the Lakers won a title. The Dodgers won a title. The Rams won a title. Mm -hmm. And that city was just objectively like more fun to live in and nicer to live in as dumb as it is sports spoiler alert. Harvey Weinstein went to jail. <laughs> yeah, Harvey Weinstein went to jail when I moved out yeah. there. Um, spoiler alert, like people care about sports and like when the team's sucking, people are like more inclined to be assholes when they're not, they're more, ha they're happier. Yeah. So that's kind of where my attitude is moving to Chicago. I'm like, yeah, of course I'm going to cheer for the, if the bears win the Super Bowl as I live in Chicago, how fun will that summer be after yeah. the Bears win the Super Bowl? It'd be so That'll fun. be fucking awesome. I, I agree. So, like, of course I'm going to cheer for that. I think you can root for the city. I okay. think you can root because you're not just rooting for the team. You're rooting for just your life to be cool. I'm, I'm rooting bit. for myself. Ultimately, yeah. like, I'm not rooting for the Bears. Yeah. I'm rooting for my life to be better. Yeah, yeah you can, don't is. don't get into any like bar debates with somebody about who the best third baseman of the '90s yeah. of the White Sox was. Don't you, don't you shouldn't act like you have always been. Don't do the thing. You're like, you know, yeah, I, I did go to a couple White Sox games growing up, so I liked them too. No, 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 Don't no. Don't say no. that. Would just be like, I'm rooting for the city. Yeah, because I, I, I'm rooting for the bartender at my bar around the corner to give me a free beer because the Bears just won six in a row. Yeah, he's like, I'm in a good mood. Here's a free beer. You know, yeah, that's this, what this I'm one's rooting on for. Eberflus. This one's on Yeah, yeah this one's, That's <laughs> what I'm rooting for. Um, I, I, I think that um, a lot of people do have. Like, I, I don't know if anybody out there can relate to at least me on this point, but when I was growing up, I didn't have. A hometown baseball team. I had yeah. the Orioles, which were 
two hours away, hour yeah. and a half away. I would go to their games sometime, but it wasn't it wasn't like I was from Baltimore. I wasn't a Baltimore Orioles fan. I grew up watching what whatever was on TV. So I watched the Braves, right, and I watched the Cubs. The Cubs, yeah. And I feel That's like a lot of people yep. have a soft spot for the Cubs. For specifically that reason, growing yeah. up watching Harry Carey. That's why. That's how I became a Cubs fan in Indiana. Same thing. We didn't have a team. We yeah. didn't have a major league team. Uh, Chicago was already close enough to where you could like you know squint close, and you're like, well, yeah, we're we're kind of a suburb of Chicago, right, yeah. Indianapolis. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's how I became a Cubs fan. Is it's you could watch every single one of their games. Um, Harry but, Carey getting drunk by like the sixth so inning. So good. Yeah, so good, the best. Dude. Harry Carey would never get a job these days. Like. He he broke every rule about being a good baseball announcer, but he was so unique that he had been doing it for a while, and everyone was like, "Yeah, we love this guy. We love this guy." But, yeah. but what I'm saying is, a guy like that would never get a chance. He would. Ne- yeah, you're right. You're right. That he did just rambling, shit face. We got a like Jake go- Marsh clone that we can he, plug in. Yeah, there. exactly. No offense to Jake Marsh. No I offense you, to Jake. Jake Marsh, but I would rather listen to Harry Carey call Cubs game. Yes, than Jake Marsh. exactly. Controversial, like, maybe, but that's where I stand on it. Jake, Jake is good. <laughs> he's he's buttoned up, and he's the most prepared person in the world for anything. But at the end of the day, Harry Carey brings he brings the X factor that you don't get from somebody that goes to a journalism school. Uh, Harry Carey would never actually. Where did he go? He, to he peeled his shirt one time, maybe more than once, but I just like I know it happened at least once. He peeled his shirt and sat out in the bleachers and and broadcast a game from the bleachers with the yeah. shirt off yeah. in the outfield, dude. That <laughs> it's rock. incredible. I'm gonna look up where Harry Carey went to went to college. Went to college, the school of hard knocks. I'm, he went to college at, in the in the booth probably. probably he went probably to college was in like World War Two. Yeah, he was 16 years old calling Cardinals games or something. I didn't go to college. I served. Yeah. Uh, let's see his career. He caught his break when he landed. Apparently, Harry Carey, according to Wikipedia, didn't really exist before he started working <laughs> in baseball, which I like to see. Like, All those guys back then, like there weren't, there weren't. You didn't go to to Syracuse or Northwestern or Missouri to get into sports journalism. You just like you were just a guy that was like on the street and available. And I, I really do think they were just hiring like homeless dudes and unemployed dudes. They're like, hey, it, we need someone to call the the, the games. Can you do it? And the guy's like, I, I'm an accountant. I can't do it. I mean, I watch the Cubs, but I can't quit my job to call these games. And then the, there's like some drunk homeless dude who's like, I'll do it. <laughs> so this is great. <laughs> so so uh, Harry Carey offered – he was offered a spot in the University of Alabama baseball team. What? But he was, he was too poor, so he couldn't go. And World War II broke out. And Harry Carey tried to enlist in the army. They wouldn't let him in due to his poor eyesight. Oh my God. So he couldn't play baseball. He couldn't serve. So uh, he got into broadcasting to be around baseball. So where did you serve Harry Carey? He literally served his country in the broadcast booth. He did. Yeah. By stepping up because they probably lost all their announcers. He couldn't fight overseas. All the announcers went to fight overseas. Listen, we didn't, we needed announcers. Hitler was bad. (laughs) Right, Hitler's, I agree. Hitler's bad. Period. Could not agree more. Period. Could not agree more. But <laughs> without H Man <laughs> taking over, do we ever get Harry Carey calling baseball games? I don't, I don't, okay, I'll just back. I, I don't. I don't. I'm thinking about it, and I. I gotta say, I don't know if that was a, a good trade off. I don't know if it was worth <laughs> it. <I don't> <laughs> I'm yeah. gonna say, I think. Uh, yeah. I think I would. I would trade not having the Holocaust for also not having Harry Carey. That's a good point. I think that's where I stand on that. I got ahead of my skis a little bit. <laughs> but you could say the Archduke Franz Ferdinand being assassinated by Gabrilo Princip. Your Domino's tip, Harry Carey becomes broadcaster for the Chicago Cubs. You're, what, what are you obsessed with right now, history-wise? Uh, so I was, I was just doing macrodosing a second ago. We talked about the Revolutionary War, which I, really don't, I never really cared that much about growing up because it's like, that's school. Yeah. You learn about that in school. That's not fun. Yeah. But I've I've been into World War Two. I've read. Do you ever? Because like everybody's in the. We talked about this on the life sh- life show with yeah. uh, Rosillo. Uh, that like once men hit a certain age, just w- whether you think you're going to or not, World War Two history comes for you. Yeah. And you just like wake up one day and you're reading books and all this sort of thing. Do you ever like get out of that phase? Yeah. Yeah. A do, little do you think bit, like there are times where you're like we, not? We also talked about this uh, on that same episode. I've started to learn more about World World War One. Just so just I can learn more about World, World War II. II. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, I'm, I'm expanding my boundaries that way a little bit. Um, just in terms of um, like interests that I have outside of like work, I, pretty busy right now. I haven't really picked up. Yeah. I've just been playing a little bit of golf. Golf, and yeah. I've gotten yeah. really into flight simulators. That's a whole nother. It turns out you don't have a lot of time to sit in a room for three hours and fly combat aircraft when you have a dog that's just biting every cord. <laughs> And just whining at you the whole time. So yeah. 
Uh, I've curtailed some of my flight simulation activities. But go- but golf is golf is you got the golf bug, which is also something that happens to men of a certain age. Is yeah. it comes for you whether you whether you want it to or not. You just wake up one day and you're like, I need to shoot under ninety. Yeah, and I need to do it consistently. It just it sucks to play. Um, we played on a course. I was telling you about this earlier. A course where it's got the biggest rough that you've ever seen right off the fairway. Yeah, that will suck the life out of you. Yeah, I I got done playing and I was like I. I need to play golf for five more years before I come back. Here. How would you describe? Uh, I'm going golfing with you tomorrow, so I'll get to see it firsthand. But um, how would you describe a golf round with you? Like if someone, if someone was, you know, if you guys ever did like a uh, 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 AWL prize giveaway, and it's like come play around with Hank and PFT mm-hmm. and Big Cat. I would. Um, what What are they What are they in store? And they're riding in your cart. I've what got. Do they, what do they get to experience? We're gonna start start drinking on the second hole. <laughs> Maybe the first, maybe have a, a little cocktail. Depends before on like out there. the first hole. Depends on what like if you're if you get a par, maybe you're a little like I, I, that's how I am. Like if I I, I want to drink as soon as possible, but also if I feel like I'm locked in, I'm like let's not let's not touch anything yet. Yeah, let's don't move. Sit, don't, don't move. For me, the goal yeah. is to get to that magic ratio where you're at like a point oh five to point oh seven, <laughs> yeah. and that's when you're good at sports. Yeah, right. That's <laughs> when the human body peaks. That, yeah. Instead of steroids, they should just pass out like tiny amounts of Jack Daniels in the clubhouse because yeah. I think they're. Haven't there been studies done, or am I getting too much of my info from Billy Football, where you get to like .05 and you're not legally? I think drunk. that was. I think there was a real study done about bowling where that was. Yeah, the case. that sounds that, right. That, that yeah. does sound right. Like literally, like being a little buzzed makes you everybody a better bowler, not just the the, the common man, but like professionals were better at bowling. Yeah, we which we've doesn't all, seem maybe that's we've you know, all played beer pong. You suck when you start. Yeah, you get good after like three games. Right, that's when you right. get the golden hour. So, uh, yeah, I think I'd be pretty fun to golf with my. I, I've started to pivot where I don't think I'll ever be a great golfer, but I want to have the best swing. Yeah, I just want to have a good swing. Just where people be like, it. "Damn, that's a great swing." PFT's got, but then I go out there, I shoot like 105. I don't care. I've got yeah. a great swing. Or someone's like, "If I, if you let me get my hands on you, I could turn you into something good." And you're like, "That's cool, man. You're never going to." Because <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not like gonna sign up for your lessons, but I appreciate. I want people to see something in me. You see something in you, yeah. And be like, I can work with this man. Do you? Uh, are you mulligan guy? Are you a play it down guy? Do you foot wedge it? Uh, yeah. So when I'm, you, uh, yeah. When I'm actually uh, once in a while, I'll play around where I really try to see what I actually shoot. Yeah. Just because I want to know if I'm getting better or not. Um, which maybe I should start taking lessons. I've just been watching YouTube and then I fall asleep thinking about what I saw on YouTube and I wake up. I'm like, I'm cured. I don't slice anymore. Cause I, I saw this guy made a lot of good points. Uh, yeah, just fuck around, cheat, Yeah, cheat, but be open about cheating. That's the thing. It, nothing worse than playing any sport with somebody that's cheating and trying to get away with it. That's right, yeah. If you're, if you're trying to get away with cheating when you're golfing with your friends, prison. Yeah. There should be a jail. If you hit a, course. if you like hit a hole in one and then tell everybody, that you hit a hole in one and it's like we didn't really see it go in the hole but you're like telling everybody yeah. it was a hole in one it's on video that, but you can't even see the video yeah that feels a little it's sus, a, it's we'll a say. little dicey if you yeah. try to get away with cheating while playing with your friends that's uh that's a special type of sad that it's kind of like cheating on the dozen yeah yeah <laughs> Quick break to talk about our friends at Coors Light. Everyone thinks about the day they'll eventually get to retire. I, I think about it all the time. I think about it actively on this show. I talk about it in real time. Um and because you know why? Because I want to enjoy all the freedom that comes with it. But who says we have to wait decades before we get to kick back and chill out? Great point, Coors Light. Why am I? Why am I dwelling on this? Why don't I just do it right now? Why don't I take advantage of that free will and spend the summer chilling like a retiree and pair those moments with Coors Light, the beer that's made to chill? It's the beer that's literally made to chill. It pairs well with the retired state of mind. The mountains on the bottles and cans even turn blue when your beer is cold, so you know when it's time to grab another. Perfect for all your summer plans or lack thereof. No judgment here. Shout out Coors Light. Got me back on Twitter. My first send tweet since uh, I think it was like 420, which I didn't even mean to do on purpose. It just worked out that way. Uh, first tweet since April 20th. I was, at, I was at the dive bar around the corner from my house. I was drinking a Coors Light. I took a picture of my bottle. I tweeted at Billy Football. You like what you see. Uh, I don't think he responded, and I think he just ignored it. Um, but I don't know. The I, inspiration struck. I was staring at the Coors Light. The mountains were blue, and I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get back on Twitter. Send tweet. So shout out to Coors Light for that. This summer, chill like you're retired with Coors Light. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door. Drizzle your Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash Titus. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. A couple other things I was going to ask you. Chicago, you, you, you love living here so far. Your, yeah. Your thoughts on uh, – 
uh, you're a homeowner. No, is this, are you a first time homeowner? Or second no? time, homeowner. second time owner, homeowner. Yeah. Um, how's that going? Are you, are you a handyman? There's too many apps. Yeah. There's too many apps these days, Mark, too many apps. It, moving to Chicago, I've probably downloaded 15 new apps on my phone. Yeah. There's the park an app, Chicago and park the, Chicago. Yeah. 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 You've got an app for your car. Sometimes two apps for your car. You've got an app uh, to use the security system on your house. Yeah. You move into a new house. They've got smart home features. You have to download another app to make your house warmer or colder. You've just got, we're getting app to death these days. You know and what? I, somebody needs to stand up new app with every, every single utility service I sign up with download our app mm -hmm. download. They make it intentionally hard to pay on your phone for anything unless you've got the app. I've, I seriously have spent the vast majority of my month and a half here downloading various apps <laughs> Forgetting passwords to set apps, yeah. having having reminder emails sent to myself where I can refresh my password after I've logged in and used their password one time. It sucks. We're getting apt to death as a society, and somebody needs to stop it. I'm so glad you brought this up. I I had a meltdown yesterday um, when I, I it dawned on me that you there, there are there are four places probably maybe they're zero at this point in this country where you can take cash or a card but cash to a, a, a business, a place of business, say, I will give you this cash, you give me a product or service, and now we're done and I'm getting the fuck out of mm -hmm. here. Dude, that does not happen anymore. No. It's, it's, it flips the square around. It's like, how much do you want to tip us? It's what you're, they'll, you, you, you're trying to buy like just the, the most, a light bulb, and they're like, what's your phone number? And I'm like, why the fuck do you need my phone number? Mm -hmm. Just take my money, and I'll take the light bulb, and we'll get out of here. Um, Download our app. Be sure to do, and, and it drives me crazy. The one thing that I'm losing my mind too about Chicago, uh, this was not this was not as prevalent in the Los Angeles, and I'm going crazy in the one week I've been here. QR code menus. I want to go fucking. Yeah. I I want to like, I I won't do it. I just like simply. And then the people that are with me always give in, and then they down they they take the picture of the QR code, and then they show me their phone, and they're like, "What do you?" And I'm like, "Don't do this. Ask them for real menus." Yeah. I go crazy. I agree with that because you sit down at at a dinner table and you think to yourself, maybe you lie to yourself for like five minutes. This is going to be a great meal where we're not going to look at our phones. Exactly. We're going to have a good time at yes. this restaurant. Like it was, be present. Be, we're going to be present. We're going to be stuck in the present right now. And then they give you the QR code menu, and you take your phone out first thing. You take a picture, and then you look. Oh, I have two missed notifications on here right. from something. Might as well check and see what those are. That leads you into another text. It spirals. It Everybody's spirals ordered and we're all now looking at our phone still. Then you've just, committed yourself yeah. to just having a phone. Dinner. Not to yeah. mention, I just want like the big ass menu that I can scan this section and then pop down to this section and then look back at the app. So if I paired the appetizer with the this main dish, now do we do like a, hmm, what would that, how would that set up dessert? And I'm kind of, I like to like look at it all at once, not like scroll through, d scroll down to the desserts. Now I'm back up to that, you know? Yeah. I go, except I, cookies on, on the website. It's like, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now I've got to click two more buttons on here. Dude, I, that I, should I, actually be a, a thing for desserts on a real menu. Do you except, accept, cookies? accept cookies? Yeah. <laughs> yeah we accept, we accept cookies. I've been here. going crazy in Chicago about these QR codes. It's everywhere. I've, I've, I've been asked to take pictures of more QR codes than I have in the last, in the rest of my life combined. And this last week, I, I don't know. Was New York this way too? Because I th this was not like there were one or it's two not restaurants. As, not in, as much. There were one or two restaurants in LA. I would go in there and just be like, my service is bad, and they'd be like, all right, here's a real menu, and we'd we'd be good. And you get here, a little bit of sauce on the menu. You're like, dude, that I looks like, like the buffalo sauce. That, yeah. that looks good. That's a good color of orange. <laughs> I feel like every single place I've been out to eat here has had has had that. And then they're also doing the the like three percent fee, like a for for your convenience, a three percent surcharge has been added. And I'm, I don't know, not to be like a hacky stand-up comedian right now on the podcast, but that's like, I'm going, fuck, I'm like legitimately losing my mind. I'm Joe Exotic every time I go out where I like, I'm, I will never financially recover from this because like, I'm staring at my receipt and it's like uh, a 7% health insurance add-on for the employees and a 3.25% credit card. And, and I'm like, what the fuck are we doing? Like, yeah. just charge me more for... You know, just charge me more for the item I bought. Like what? Like I don't know. The five percent sometimes it'll be like five percent um, cost of living increase for right. service staff, which you can decline if you would like to. If you, yeah. And who on earth? I want to actually hear stories <laughs> about the people that have declined. My parents. Yeah. It's true the Midwest life, boomers. <laughs> true life. I have declined the cost of living adjustment. Get my dad on the phone because he's yeah. All the Midwest boomers that are just like no, not it, doing this. It is bullshit uh, that that's passed on like directly to us. 
Yeah. But just be be a good sport about it and just put it in the prices of your food. That's all I'm saying. Like just, hide just, it. just make the price like make the price for my burger more and I'll pay it. I don't care. But like when you're like, yeah, our, one of our employees' kids is struggling with leukemia and uh we're gonna add a five percent fee to help pay for their health insurance. Uh you can of course remove that if you'd like. And yeah. I'm just like <laughs> You know what? Fuck it. Remove it. Yeah. I, w- I want to I just, care. Remove as, it. as an experiment here, now I got all hot and bothered about apps. I just want to see what the most recent apps that I've had to download. Had to download the FedEx app the other day <laughs> to find out uh, when they were going to come back with my package. Also had to download the UPS app. Yep. I had to download the McDonald's app. Yeah, you have to, of course. It, which <laughs> somehow has like a 4.99 rating. Despite it's got like millions of downloads, it must be a great app, but I had to download it in the airport, had to download an app for my gym, had to download an app for my security system, had to download two separate apps for an audio system that was in my house that I still don't know how to use. Um, I don't even know what this one is. What is, oh, uh, an app to pay my mortgage on, which they didn't have. Uh, I had to download uh, the Flickr app to try to get pictures uploaded at like a CVS so I could print them out, their own particular app, had to download the Park Chicago app, had to download a Wi-Fi app, had to download a doorbell app, had to download uh, a gym app for a gym I wanted to go to one time, had to download (laughs) the Xfinity app, had to download an app for identifying coins because I found a bunch of my parents' old coins. Yeah. That was actually a very useful app. I could just take a picture. That one one was good. I take back CoinSnap, good app. Um, had to download the NBA app. I think I was trying to watch the draft when I was on the, I should have already had that one. (laughs) That one's on me. Had to download two separate apps for various transportation methods, like scooters and bikes to get around Chicago, two separate apps for those. Uh, and the list goes on, the list goes on. It's crazy. And so that's just in the last like six, six weeks or so. Um, there's too many apps, Mark. Do you feel like you're getting old? Do you feel like, no, I think that what we've just been talking about here is a, a healthy conversation that all the kids are <laughs> that having. All the kids are having. Yeah, there's too many apps. We hate QR codes. Uh, yeah. Uh, bring back running backs and fullbacks. These yeah. are these, these are, are the topics of conversations in high school cafeterias across America. We still we still uh, we're still in touch, man. We're yeah, still cool. we still got it. Um, one of the, maybe this is the last thing I was gonna ask you. Uh, because I'm I'm fascinated. You you were the first. Uh, Barstool employee I knew um, you, you my introduction to Barstool I would not be here if it was not for you um, when you sign on at Barstool I sort of knew what Barstool was but you kind of legitimized you 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 made it from like a thing I just kind of put over there where like every so often I'd see like probably KFC or, or Dan or Dave um, tweet something that would get retweeted into my timeline I'm like who are these guys I don't really I don't really get it when you sign on a bar stool, because I had followed you when uh, I'm, I'm a PFT hipster, like I was following you when you had like eight thousand Twitter followers, um, and you signed on a bar stool, and and I I then started paying more attention to bar stool, and obviously you guys start part of my take, and your whole uh, deal has blown up. Um, as if you're such a PFT hipster, name three of my uh, best White History Month blogs. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't do that anymore. Uh, I, I remember the PFT days. Were you at Barstow when you did like the Cleveland RNC? Oh, that was right before, I think. Yeah, see? Yeah, that's yeah. that's kind of, that's PFT hipster though. Yeah, that, that is old school. Yeah, but that was old school. I remember when you went to Cleveland. I, I, um, I know what you're saying though. Like I, I, I definitely don't want to say I legitimized Barstow because there were a lot of people that were... You did, you, you did doing, whether you did for everybody they, else or not, I, yeah. I will say it for you, you did for me. Yeah. And, and, and I would not be here if it was not for you in the sense that like I never would have like looked at Barstool as like a viable career path or anything else. And granted, it took me eight years to actually sign on to work here. But like mm-hmm. the curiosity was there. Like the first time I got on, like everybody asked me um, about part of my take. Like that's the number one thing I get asked about is that everybody's like, love you on part of my take. And I'm like, great news guys. I do, I do a show you can listen yeah. to if you're, you know, but I, you know, I, I, I get it. Everybody fucking talks to me about part of my take and I get asked all the time. Like, how'd you, how'd you get on there so early? And I've told the story a bunch, but you reached out to me because it was March and, and you guys were like starting this new podcast and, and you had asked for me to come on this new show. And the whole reason I went on was because I, I had followed you. I didn't really know who Dan was. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I just wanted to like, I, I never, you and I had like DM would each other or something on Twitter, but like, I had never seen your face. I had never like heard your voice. And I was like, I'm, I'm going to, I want to go on the show just to see who this guy is. Cause I followed him on Twitter for so long. Um, 
and then it was great. I think you guys hit the reggae tron like seven thousand times. Yeah, you yeah. Know? <laughs> it was a really, it was a really conducive sound effect. Great, to doing a great show. Interview. But then I walked away from there, and I remember thinking like that that big cat was his name, Big Cat. Like that guy seemed kind of cool, and like mm -hmm. I would follow him, and then like I, it just kind of came from there. So like legitimately, bars you you did legitimize barstool for me. I, I do was, think to a certain part of the internet, I was a gateway drug for barstool for sure yeah. because and they were already big on their own. They had a massive following, but unless you grew up in one of a handful of cities right or you had a friend that knew about them growing up you weren't a lot of people didn't know about them but the the fans that they had were obviously rabid and they had a ton of fans too which is it, it's crazy how like basically five cities it was so small back then right and they had a massive fan base but there were a lot of people that i guess you could say maybe um more mainstream sports media didn't have a concept of barstool or didn't know how big barstool was yeah and a lot of people that followed me at the time, I think Gaz did a comparison. This is such a Gaz thing. Uh, when he hired me, he did an analysis of my Twitter followers and then Big Cat's Twitter followers. Mm -hmm. And there was some overlap, but compared to everyone else that worked at the company, it was it was like night and day. Yeah. Because a lot of people that followed me, they didn't know about Barstool. Right. And so when I joined, I, I think that there's probably – a lot of people that are like you that had, for whatever reason, I, I put myself in that same bucket, by the way. I didn't start following Barstool at all until probably 2014. Yeah. Probably around 2014 is when I first got exposed to it. And it's not that I had anything against it. It was just that, I, yeah, didn't, yeah. I didn't know about it. Yeah, literally, I mean, literally, it was it was like very it was a very regionalized thing. Where it was like, why would I follow Barstool? I'm not a Boston sports fan. You yeah, know? Like, I, that's just kind of what. It, for whatever how reason, I it. it just wasn't it wasn't something that my friends had ever introduced to me and yeah. I never happened to see growing up. But then I started following some of the guys there. And then, um, then I was like, these guys are very funny and very creative, but I think there's probably, probably a lot of people out there that when I did join the company, they said, okay, I'll look more into this because I want to see what this so guy's doing. Now that I'm, I'm still less than six months into to signing on a bar stool. I, I guess I'm just asking you, please reassure me that like, I, I, It'll be okay. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. <laughs> no, it is okay. It's been okay the whole time, and I, I'm, I'm so far, especially being here just this last week. It's like no, I kind of hate I, you though. You know why? I hate. I kind of hate you, and I kind of hate. Um, it says more about me than about you. Trust me. Um, people that that sign contracts with Barstool now and they join, and everyone like a hundred percent of people out there are like. Oh man, that's awesome! I'm so happy. For there's it. no risk. Yeah, you're gonna, yeah, you're gonna kill yeah. it, Mark. Yeah. You're gonna. Oh, this is such an awesome move. I love those guys. You're gonna have such a fun time working there. When I joined, it was probably like 80% of people. Oh, yeah, I remember. I that remember, were like, yeah. fuck PFT. PFT is a piece of shit. Yeah. I hope PFT dies. Yeah. Like, it, it got bad. I got, it was probably 75, 80%. All the Deadspin dorks, like, tweeting out your real name as a gotcha, you know? Yeah. Like, and, you're and, just and, like, and, like, all right. In retrospect, like, they were pieces of shit. Yeah. I, I didn't have a job. I needed yeah, a yeah. job. Barstool believed in me, Big Cat believed yeah. in me. Everybody else on the internet said, "No, we're not going. You're funny, but we're not going to hire you." So, yeah, exactly. You're, so you're, yeah, you're, fuck, you're like, fuck you know, you. yeah, you know, you're like, all right, fine, I won't go to Barstool. You want to pay me? How much they're going to pay me? And they're like, no, we can't do that. We have no money. And you're yeah. Like, yeah. So shut the fuck up. And so the, the very same people that were like, "No, we're not going to hire this guy," were like, "PFT's a piece of shit for selling out." Yeah. Well, fuck you. Suck my dick. <laughs> Sell out on this dick. That, if it makes you feel better, I did get a little pushback. Although I think mine was more. Um, like, cause of the, the Tate situation, like our show breaking up, I think like that, you know, I, I think I was the bad guy and I, ta I stabbed Tate in the back and threw his carcass into a ditch and that's how people saw it. And then it'd be one thing if I did that, but then for me to do that and, and I made the joke with, with, uh, Brandon on the show, uh, last week where people would say, I can't believe you're going to work for that guy. And I was like, which one? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> Brandon, be more specific. Hey, Brandon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, I don't, I don't know who you're, uh. You're gonna have to be more specific Wait, as to you're, which you're which gonna, you're gonna go work with TJ. Yeah, TJ. Ugh. <laughs> um, but the the thing I wanted to ask you, and and, and we can get the hell out of here, but uh, just in, in how how your career has progressed, and I've kind of watched uh, every step of the way. Um, not every step, but like since you you know I am a PFT hipster, proud of it. Um, are you good at being famous? Do you think? Do you think as you evaluate like where you're at in your life, and I imagine there was a point where you started in this career, maybe when you were younger, you daydreamed about a world where you take your your brand new puppy outside mm -hmm. and people are rolling down their windows as they drive by and yelling at you. Um, do you think the way you handle your fame, your notoriety, and all of that 
is how you pictured yourself handled it. Are, are you proud of yourself? Like looking, looking at where you're at. Are you like proud of, yeah. Of who I am? Am I proud of or Do you my think comment? you're going to be infamous? Because I think are some say, people like, are have like, I, have I handled success? Yeah. Do you like, think you've yeah. handled success well? Do you think like, because I, I, I mean, if you want me to answer for you first, I think the answer is yes. I think like watching you interact with people on the street, because it, it is kind of like, Again, like being a guy that like followed you on Twitter when you had like 7,000 followers and now to like go places with you and see the way you just get swarmed and everything. Uh, it, it, I'm fascinated by like how you handle it because you are like kind of a regular dude. But I, I, I'm just curious from your perspective as you look back on like the last seven, eight years of your life. Do you think that like where you've arrived, you're like, I'm, I'm handling this well? Or you're like, this is sort of like this has become more than I anticipated it being. I'd say, um, I'd say besides like the Coke habit and domestic <laughs> violence charges and the stock fraud. Yeah. I've done pretty good. No, it's, it, that's, it's a tough question to answer. Do you enjoy I, it? Do you I think, I think that I have, but it's, I don't think I'm good at being famous. I think, but I think I'm handling it well, you know, yeah, like, yeah. like I feel like a lot of people, when they get famous, you're supposed to do X, you, you know what you want to do. Yeah. And now that I'm famous, I can do this. I have to like, I have to remind myself, like, I'm never going to be the uh, call ahead. Yeah, yeah, I, that's what I mean. Like, do yo, you, do hey, you, hey, what's up? This is PFT. I got your number from so and so. Thinking about swinging by later. Is there a table that's open? How do you, like, how do you, not, ba how do you balance being humble, but then also using the, the, you know, you kind of have been handed a gift, which is that you can use this like power almost to, to get into rooms you might not be able to get into otherwise. I'm not saying that. So if, how do you, how do you straddle the line? I guess I'm not saying that if I get introduced to somebody and it's like, oh, this is this person who worked at so and so. And the person's like, yeah, if you ever need anything, give me a shout. I'm not saying I won't do that from time to time. Yeah. Um, but it's, uh, it's, it's still weird to me. I, I love the fact that people come up and say hi. Sometimes it's awkward because, and I've actually found out that it's, it's because they sometimes don't know, you know, they get caught up in the moment. They don't know what to say. And so I've figured out ways to try to like disarm them get them comfortable. Yeah. So that, that used to make me uncomfortable. If somebody were to come up and say, Hey, can I get a picture? I'm a big fan of the show. And they're like visibly shaking mm -hmm. and it's, you feel their hand twitching on as they put their yeah, arm around you. Yeah. Which is, it's, it's weird because like, I just do a fucking podcast. Why? Right. At first I was like, why, why is this guy so nervous to meet me? It's, this is a strange situation and that would make me uncomfortable. But as I, I dealt with it more and more, I just learned to, it's my job to try to help that person be cool and like yeah. show who they are. So that way they don't go home and they're like, man, I really said some stupid shit to PFT. So I'll just, if I can tell they're nervous, I'll just be like, oh, what's your name? Where are you yeah, from? I'll, yeah. I'll get them talking about themselves a little bit. And then we can have a moment where we're actually talking to each other as human beings and, maybe, and it becomes less of a, and it becomes cool. Yeah. It's like, this is a good situation. So I just always remind myself that it's, it's, it's never a problem. It's a good thing when people, it, it dawned on the one me. time I, I do want to make a PSA though. Go ahead. And it's also kind of a, a humble brag. If you see me in the gym, <laughs> all right. If you see me in the gym, I love you guys. Please don't come up as I'm working out and be like, let me get, a, I, uh, no. I don't want to interrupt your workout, but can I get a picture of that you while you're me, working out? That happened to me for the first time a couple of weeks ago. Because yeah. what happens after like that was, point is everybody else in the gym sees this happen. And then they think to themselves, who is that guy that they just right. took a picture with? Right. And then that deepest fear that we all have when you're walking around and you think in the back of your head, like everyone's staring at me. Right. They're all judging me. That actually becomes reality for me where now I'm walking around and everyone is looking at trying to figure out who this asshole is that just had his picture taken. Like he's got long hair. He doesn't look like he's in great shape. So he's probably not an athlete. Yeah. What, what, what could he do? Maybe, maybe uh, like bassist for kid rock. <laughs> maybe he's a DJ somewhere. And then, and then when you see that person later on in the locker room, it's like, I don't want to No, I'm not going to get naked. Cause, cause it's you. That happened to me. I don't want to do the gym. The gym thing happened to me for the first time, like a month ago. And I, I, it was like, I hadn't even started lifting yet. I was like stretching, like warming up. And then I had the exact same thought of like, shit, now I got to put like 10 more pounds on the bench press bar than yeah. I, I was going to. And now I got to, you know, that's the only good part about yeah. it is you do every rep <laughs> you lift, like someone's watching you. But that, that thing is so real that, uh, uh, like the first guy takes the picture and then now in the back of your head, you're like, I'm an asshole because now other people are looking at me like, who the fuck is this guy? And now you're in the position of like having to almost defend yourself. You're like, I'm not a celebrity. I'm not, it's like not a big deal. Like just be, move on with yeah. your day. The easiest way to get me to turtle is if, if I go somewhere with like one of my aunts 
you know, and, and we're going out to dinner and she just like tells the waiter, he's like, you know, he, he's like, you know, you know, my, my nephew there is famous. And mm-hmm. then I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And I just like, you know, and then the, and then the waiter will be like, so who are you? And then I'm like, it doesn't matter. Then can you we, have can to we expl- please stop. Yeah. Can we please not do this? It's not, I do um, a podcast, which makes you sound less famous. I, 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 I am one, one millionth as, as popular as you are, obviously. But, uh, I, I do, you know, people want pictures every so often and all that. My, my number one, like, fuck, I don't know if I'm cut out for this life moment. I'll never forget it. I'm in Hilliard, Ohio at a Chipotle. It was back when I was fat and I ate Chipotle all the time. And I'm shoveling this. Oh, this, that's another app I downloaded. <laughs> the Chipotle, it was the Chipotle app, yeah. I'm shoveling this burrito into my face as I'm looking at my phone by myself. I'm just sitting by myself at a Chipotle, and I'm scrolling through Twitter, and there's a picture of me on my feed eating a burrito at the Chipotle. <laughs> it looks like your camera's on, on front mode, but it's yeah, actually just an old a guy, picture. A guy tweeted at me a picture of me eating like he was in the bushes or something. And I just looked up at like, like I got beans spilling out of my mouth. And I'm like, where the fuck? Like what's going on? And I'm looking around like, what is happening? And dude, that fucked me up for like a month. Like I still, yeah. like I still think about it every so often, but like there was like a month straight where I was like, I can't go in public. And like every time I, like, I didn't think that I was like super famous. It was just more like, I didn't even realize that this was a possibility that like when I, when I left my house today, it never crossed my mm-hmm. mind that there might be a picture of me on the internet eating a fucking burrito and, and, and it, it just kind of like messed me up. So like, I don't know. It was just, uh, I was just curious. I was curious. Like how that would well fuck me up too. Dude, it fucking, Watch, like, like looking at picture of me doing exactly what I'm doing. Just so disgusting. It was like one of the most, yeah. Dis- it, yeah. And I was like, I, but it wasn't, it was, it was one, the picture, but it was two, this guy didn't say a word to me. He didn't come up and be like, Titus, big fan, whatever. And then snap the picture on his way out. Mm-hmm. I was just sitting there scrolling Twitter and I was like, what the fuck is this? Um, but yeah, it dawned on me, uh, uh, that you and Dan are probably, you know, like Chicago is, you're coming from a place in New York where maybe, you know, you guys get recognized all the time in New York, but there are, there are, are A-list actors that live in New York and all that sort of thing. Like, are you, you guys might be top 10 celebrities in Chicago, maybe top five. I, I mean, know, for God's sakes, like who's, I don't, I don't who's, know enough about the Chicago. I don't either. That's what we got to like investigate because I don't, I, there are a lot of people from Chicago. Bill do, Murray. They, do they currently live in Chicago? Do they actively participate in chicago are they at the grocery store are they you know what i mean white Sox dave white Sox dave is up there it's a big list uh i yeah i I, don't know i always i i want to make it clear that like i don't i don't mind it at all when people do it Mm -hmm. it's it's a good if it's a problem it's a great problem to have yeah i I like people coming up and saying that something that i've been a part of has impacted them some way that's a good feeling so i always remind me that all I'm saying is just in the gym no pictures no pictures no pictures that's all come dap me up in the gym after the gym or, or, on the street after. Yeah, we'll, we'll do a picture. We'll do a picture after. But just come up, dap me up. I'll say what's up. We'll talk. It'll be a good we time. Can move on. I just don't want. I don't want everybody in that room being like PFT. He only squats like 145 <laughs> pounds. It was embarrassing. But it was a light day, you know. And we were doing more. It was recovery it was day. Form, it was form. It was a form day. Um, no, I'm. I'm. I, I thought to ask you because there's just like so few famous people that aren't lizard people that like you know were <laughs> were like brought up like in. In, in like a culture of like, you know, like child actor or like, you know, like there's so few people like you're just a normal dude that like you, you found the right combination and, I'll, and, and, and hit it big. And now here we are. And I think it's been cool to watch you be the same dude, but also you can't be the same dude because how could you possibly be the same? dude I don't know. It's just you, fascinating. You do change a little bit, but I'll, I'll give a lot of credit to the people that I work with, too, because uh, on part of my take, especially it's like the people that I work with, um, they're all very normal people that yeah. will bust your balls if you. If you get Hollywood on anybody, that is that is that is true. And, yeah, and we're all kind of the same low key person where we're not out there. We're not. None of us seek fame. Right. Like I, I never. The the goal of all this was never. I want to be famous. It was just like, I want to make these guys laugh. I want to make other people right. laugh. Right. And then everything else has followed after that. So none of us are really enjoying. I guess what you could say would be like the trappings of fame. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that you'll ever find us like in a in a newspaper for yeah, uh, or like on page six. We're not we're not the kind of guys that are going to call page six because we went out to a fancy dinner and we want them to report on it. You know, like we're all at that's the a end funny, of the day, That's a funny prank idea, actually. Now that I think about it, I I, I know you guys. I'm going to dinner with all you guys, and I just there you I, go. But I call I personally call page six and PFT spotted PFT. at Blue Man yeah. Group. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no pictures at the gym. Uh, 
and and we're optimistic about the commanders. Very like, optimistic. Those are, those about are the takeaways. Uh, I appreciate you doing this, dude. We never we've never done a one on one thing before. Yeah, this, this is uh, this was fun, and um, we I, should do it again. Uh, I know Big Cats warned me about going on the show, but he was. Yeah. I just want to say he was wrong. I think you're you're a good guy yeah. and a good host. It's a good show. Uh, thanks, man. So that Big Cat can suck. Uh, we got. I got to teach you how to shoot a basketball. By the way, that's right. I'm looking forward we're to. Do, that. We're gonna collab. Let's collab. Yeah, let's, let's collab build. on that. I want you to teach me how to uh, soccer style kick a football. Okay. I used to I used to be the field goal kicker for the uh, for my football team up until high school uh, freshman year I got I got booted from that role but I was still the punter I had a big leg but I didn't know what I was doing I didn't have any good form um, you look like you'd probably be good but I was a toe basher so that's why I okay like imagine imagine uh, it's seventh grade football there's a six two kid out there <laughs> just that's playing quarterback stuff. punter and then he's toe bashing the shit out of uh, and, and I would hit knuckleballs like crazy. And that's that's still how I kick a football is I line up straight and I toe bash it. And I could never – I never played soccer growing up, so I never knew how to, like, soccer kick a football. And, like, once you get stuck in your ways – I don't know. So that's always been a – I've always thought that, like, I might have a good leg. But I was always hampered by the toe bashing where I just hit knucklers. Your coach like, was just like, you're the most athletic player, so we're going to have you – you can probably kick. My entire existence is basically I hit puberty before everyone else. That's how I got, like, quote-unquote good at basketball, but then eventually everyone else hit puberty, and we realized I'm not that good at basketball. That's how I, you know, like, the whole the whole deal is, like, I was 6'4 in eighth grade. That's how, like, when to, people are like, what's the Mark Titus this, story? I say I was 6'4 in eighth grade. We need, to, we need to work on this negative self-talk, Mark. All right. We'll You're work a pretty good this. basketball player. I was a pretty good basketball player. Um, I average, was, average podcaster, but, average but podcaster, very good basketball player. I, I, I'll take that. I was a good punter, a good high school punter. Yeah, I'll teach you how to <laughs> kick. It's not that hard. It's um, not that hard at all. All right, PFT Commenter, you can listen to him on the Pardon My Take podcast. Uh, it is available wherever, I believe, wherever you get your podcast. I believe you should be able to find it. Just Google the words Pardon My Take. Mm -hmm. Those are the words. What about macro dosing? Uh, macro dosing Mark? as well. Thank you. I want to come, I'm, if, if I may, not anytime we're, soon. We're going to invite ourselves onto another gonna, man's we're podcast. We're going to invite ourselves onto another man's podcast. <laughs> I... I got to find the right material, but like, I'm, I'm not going to invite my, no, I'm not going to invite myself. What I'm going to do is I'm going to like subliminally, subliminally, uh, just start talking to you about some shit and just like, kind of like Mark, what topics do you care about? The, the two topics I'm obsessed with right now are Alcatraz and the Titanic. Okay. <laughs> Cause that's cause this permissible. Yeah. Like when that thing went down, I just had like this, like we talked about it on the show a few times, but then, uh, I, after those, after we found out it imploded and these guys like all died and everything, I I just sat there. I was like, if you if you had a billion dollars, why the fuck would you go see the Titanic? Yeah. I was like, what was it about this thing that made people so interested? I started reading up on it, and I was like, <laughs> I I think I want to go see the Titanic, yeah. dude. Yeah, there's uh, something about it. There's something about it. People so get, been, anything that people get that obsessed with, I'm kind of interested in learning about. There must I, be something to that. I've been obsessed with the Titanic the last month or so. I've well, been reading everything about the Titanic. Maybe we could do Titanic. Oh no, we already did a Titanic episode. It's okay. We could do Alcatraz. I'm I'm obsessed with Alcatraz as well, and then like the guys who escaped, and then you know like the 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 official narrative is like. The, the the one escape where the three dudes got out and the and then the official narrative is we never saw them again so obviously they were eaten by sharks because there's a lot of shark infested water and I'm like is it I'm like is it obvious no nope, nope, do we know that propaganda. for sure because what if they just like swam to the shore and then I think a lot of people swim in that location from time right. to time and emerge from the water not eaten right. by sharks right so I I and then I like when I when I went to Alcatraz I was just like this is the wildest shit ever that we just like had a prison here and we were sending. <laughs> It should be a Al bachelor Capone, party. Yeah. It should be a bachelor party in Alcatraz. That's Alcatraz. a great idea. You, you bring your dancers, you bring your boys, yeah. poker set up. Um, um, one, one last thing, because you brought up the submersible, which I've also been kind of obsessed with recently. Mm -hmm. Did you know that they made water that you can breathe? Like that humans can breathe? Who did? Who, what? What? Science made it. Science? <laughs> Science made it. They, Mark, they, they tested on rats, and they put a rat in one of those cages, like a drowning cage, into a vat of this stuff. And it's like super oxygenated water and the rat starts to panic because it thinks it's going to drown and then as it inhales the water it's like wait what's going on i can breathe and then they've tested on humans too humans have done it it's not water really it's like this weird liquid that you you can put on like an airtight helmet they fill the helmet up and if you can make yourself breathe it in which is hard to do but if you can make yourself breathe it in um, without panicking you can breathe normally it's nuts. So why don't we just get rid of all the water in the ocean and replace it with this? New water. Just new water. water and then we can just build cities under the... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like it. We got Duh. a lot of real estate down there. Let's uh, let's do that. That's incredible. Yeah. Look into um, it. Shout out Blake, by the way, who hasn't barked at all. Good He's boy. What a good, what a good pup. Uh, 
All right, PFT Commoner, appreciate you uh, making time for us. And uh, yeah, that's the show. Thank you, Mark. See everybody. All right, I lied. Not the end of the show. Um, I, I want to do some quick shout outs before we get the hell out of here. Uh, I, I had, I had uh, I think, three. I had three shout outs. Number one, I want to shout out myself, TJ, for a, just an, an incredible masterclass performance on the dog walk draft. Uh, I, I went I, on. I, I saw a lot of comments mentioning your name about this about this draft, dude. Just like absolute, ma- I mean, it was. It, it's got to be the best performance on that show of all time. Like I, 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 I came out throwing heat. We were doing. I, I don't want to spoil it for anybody. I don't want to. But we we did a fictional athlete draft. Um, all I'll say is this: it's not really a spoiler, but maybe it is. All the other bozos in the room. Uh, just read off a BuzzFeed list. They were all like trying to audition for BuzzFeed, I think, where they were just like, what is the most basic bitch pick possible? I went galaxy brain on almost every pick and uh, I ran circles around them. So shout out me uh, for, for bringing some creativity to a, uh, an exercise that Brandon Walker brought absolutely zero creativity to. And that was evident out of the gate. But I just wanted to say like, I don't, I, I've gotten some heat for it, TJ. Like some people have loved it. Love, love my picks. Some called me the worst guest ever. I just want to officially go on record to say I apologize for nothing, and I stand by every pick I made. And I, I thought I brought the heat. I thought that was. I, a great I did see that it me. was it was enough, uh, maybe enough feedback that it brought you back to Twitter after four it's, months away. Yeah. So. <laughs> Welcome back. I was in there mixing it up with everybody. I'm chirping back at everybody. Um, yeah, so uh, I, I won't spoil it too much. Go listen to the, uh, the the dog walk. It was a lot of fun. Uh, it was it was it was all the guests of the show the last week from this show it was it was all the chicago guys plus brandon walker plus me so we all sat down we drafted our our the, the best fictional athletes and like i said i was the only one that like put any sort of thought into it and everybody else just googled like what's the top rankings on buzzfeed i'm just going to regurgitate those and you know and the internet likes and then everyone well i don't i won't spoil it i won't spoil it i just wanted to shout out myself uh i wanted to shout out kansas and north carolina playing a home and home uh that was announced today that in 24 and 25, uh, they're going to play a home and home in basketball. And it was one of those deals for me that I was like, instead of being excited about that, all, my initial reaction was like, how is this not a thing already? You know, like it was, it was like, damn, I never really, I never really thought about it, but they, they don't play all the time. They should play every year. The Roy Williams and Dean Smith connection should make these, now that both of those guys are gone, uh, now that Dean Smith has passed and Roy Williams is retired, um, they should keep the bond between Kansas and North Carolina. I think they should play every year. And like the fact that they're doing this, yes, it is awesome. But I was also just like, yeah, what the hell? Why was this not always a thing? This is the, the, the if there's two pro, if there's two blue blood programs that should play each other every year, I guess, I guess Duke and Carolina should probably be it. But otherwise, it's Carolina and Kansas. So uh, I'm fired up about that. That's awesome. And then finally, my last shout out uh, RIP Donnie Baker. Uh, sh- shout out to, uh, Donnie Baker, the uh, the guy who played Donnie Baker on the Bob and Tom show. I I am an indie kid. Vibs knows who I'm talking about. Uh, Vibs Vibs and I have bonded over the Bob and Tom show and, and being from Indy and all that. But uh, a lot of listeners of mine are, are are I assume if you're not still Bob and Tom fans, you were once upon a time uh, growing up. Bob and Tom TJ was basically like Howard Stern for the Midwest, which was like they were they were like the funny dudes, but then also they had Midwest sensibilities. So like they didn't talk to porn stars and say bad words and all. You know what I mean? Like they they would play prank calls and like stuff like that. And in the Midwest, we we're like these guys are the funniest dudes ever, and they're still doing the show. Uh, I went on it a couple years ago, and it was like an absolute highlight for me. Um, but Donnie Baker was was one of their there. There was a dude that played this character Donnie Baker. It's it's hard to describe, but uh. I just wanted to shout him out. There's a dude that played a character, Donnie Baker, that like was was very funny and when I was growing up, and I don't know. And he, I, he, I guess he passed away unexpectedly, and I was very sad about that. So shout out Donnie Baker. Uh, I don't even remember the guy's name that played him. He was just Donnie Baker. I see his face. I see Donnie Baker. So uh, that's it. Do you have any shout outs, CJ, before we go? No, Cody just sent this that the bracket for Maui just got announced, or I guess got announced today. Oh, really? Kansas, Chaminade, Marquette, UCLA, Tennessee, Syracuse, Purdue, Gonzaga. Dude, all-time loaded field. I got to get there. I got to do it. I got a, I got a, kind of a Maui shirt on today, by the way. Um, John Ro- John Rothstein was calling me. I, I'm a little behind the scenes action. He was calling me trying to get the scoop. Did he tweet it? Was he the one? Did he get the scoop? He tweeted he it. It, 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 it. He didn't say breaking in the tweet, so I don't know if somebody else had it first. It just says news, but that's where I saw it. Or Dude, John, it. John called me like in a panic. Um. 
today like do you have the do you have the maui scoop and i was like man i wish i did like i don't know like i don't he's like i feel he, he said i'm close on this and i need i need <laughs> yeah i swear to god that happened today so i was hoping when he told me that it's been announced i was hoping it was john because john john's out there doing the work man john's out there grinding so shout out john it Rossi. looks like he got it I maybe I don't know I don't see anybody else that had it first I told John what I told him on the phone was like I the only scoops I'm interested in are your personal life I broke that you're engaged to be married and I broke that your wife is pregnant and due in September um so I mean I guess I'll break when the white when he ha when the baby comes <laughs> when he officially has the baby tune into the uh be sure to refresh the uh Mark Titus show Twitter or and, and, and or, or stay tuned to this show and uh and we'll see when, when Rothstein has his kid. Those are the only excuses I'm interested in. But, yeah, dude, all-time la loaded Maui field. That's going to be so freaking good. So good. Um, I think that's it. Thanks to PFT. Thanks to everybody listening. I have I – have I, I, I hope it's a fun show Wednesday. We have a recurring guest coming back on. I don't want to spoil who it is, but it's an emergency podcast about the state of – I mean, you'll connect the dots, but – there's some there's some shit going on in Indiana, TJ. Not at Indiana University, but the state of Indiana. With uh, <laughs> Big Cat just popped in and said hello. Um, there is some shit going on in the state of Indiana that needs to be addressed, and we will address it on the next show. But uh, it, it has reached emergency status, and there's only one man I can turn to to talk about, and he has confirmed that he will be on the show on Thursday. So that's what we're doing. See you guys. Display, yeah, this PFT brought his dog in. How you doing? How was the move? Sucks. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It's not the move, it's the unpacking. Yeah, it's I the... I just have a house right now, and it's just full of fucking boxes. It's, it's your wife turning to you and saying, where do we put? Where do we want to put the spatula? And you're like, why would I give a single fuck? But then when they when she puts it where you wouldn't put it, you're like, why would we put the spatula? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, why I, would we I put it here? It, oh, this guy's here? Can, can, we, can we... DJ. Can we hash this out? Like, what is... Well, there's nothing to hash out. We're not... We're not... Co How old are you? How old are you? How old are you? I'm turning 25 tomorrow. We're not going to be friends. And that doesn't mean, like... That's not, like, a mean thing. Like, you have a life to live. My life is over. Do we... I, I guess, like... It was um, more of a Bears-Bills thing. Preseason. Big Cat, Big Cat, you want to go to Rutgers, Wisconsin at Camp Randall? Yeah, see, TJ asked me that. He's asked me that every time I'm like, no. No. <laughs> I, my thought was it, was it would be the only Bills game I'll probably see all year since I'm moving. You can still go. You can still go. You go. I don't I have know, that kind of money. Uh, it's oh, preseason, well, dude. Hold on, Cody, that's worse. If you were... If you so you're asking Dan because you want him to pay for the tickets. Also, it's preseason. It's like ten dollars. <laughs> People give those away. No, I'm saying it will be the only Bills game I'll see because I won't go back home to Buffalo all year. Got it. Okay, but I guess Dan's point and and, and now my point is why you can still go. Like it, just because Dan says no, right? Yeah, still gonna no, go. I'm gonna go. And I just want to like I'm I'm actually it's actually a detriment now I I've, I've I've reached a new like phase in my life where I'm just brutally honest because it's just easier that way. Uh, TJ can attest to it. The sometimes it bites me in the ass. Like the uh, we did we did roof ball and the guy like did this whole speech at the end. He was like, my sister usually sings the national anthem, but she can't make it for the U S open. And we'd like to extend the invite to you. And I was like, when is it? He's like Sunday, September 24th. I was like, I'm out. I said that to him like, <laughs> on it. I was like, I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> and because well, I just like, it's easier just to be honest with people. We're, we're never going to be friends. We could be friendly. Yeah. But like hold you on, hold are on, hold 25 on, hold on, hold on, hold on. single. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I got to point out the obvious. You go on Rosillo's show. Yeah. You stir up some shit with him and Kyle. Yeah. Similar dynamic. I mean, <laughs> you know, Cody is not working with you directly, but just similar dynamic. That It's like a guy you're going to work with. He's going to be in the Chicago office eventually. Uh, and you're hitting him with the we'll never be friends thing. I don't know. I'm just. I'm just you see, Rusillo should do that with Kyle. He. You're, 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 <laughs> Rusillo's never brutally honest. And again, it's not. 
me saying we'll never be friends is not like a mean thing because if I were 25 and single, we would be friends. Yeah. But you don't want a 38 year old father of three as a friend. You don't want you don't want to be friends. There's yeah. not like we could you have nothing in common. We still might do something social. Like we might be at the same bar at the same time kind of thing. But we're you don't want to be texting me being like, what's up this weekend? I'm like. Uh, I'm going to be getting up around 5 30 because that's when my son gets up. Then we got to go. We're doing soccer practice at 8 a.m. You don't want that. You don't and, want and, that. And line. even if you are at the same bar at the same time, if you're having a great time, Cody, that, that almost certainly means that Dan wants to get the hell out of there. Yes. It's oh, almost 100%. Like Big Cat's like, I, actually, <laughs> if we're under this hypothetical, here's one way we could be friends. If we're at the same bar at the same time, and uh, I don't have a seat and you have a seat, if you give me your seat, I will be your friend. <laughs> That's pretty, pretty much it. Uh, selfishly, I just I'm, I want to know because every time you bring up Cody's antics, because it's been a, it's been a hand it's been. Well, a Cody put like, me on blast. Yeah, but but you, you what what else did you do? Because you've talked about him a couple different times. Where you're well, like, no, I, I oh, so Co- I like Cody because he's he is. Um, I can already tell he's a ride or die. He's like a Fasoli Junior, which I appreciate. <laughs> so I like him. So he doesn't bother me, but he when he, when Kentucky Derby happened. And Cody tweeted, "Drop your drop, drop your fits." That's and right. That's I went what it back was. to That's it twenty four hours That's later, and was. there were zero replies. That's what it was. My heart broke a little bit. So then I got like, you know, when a kid's about to die from like cancer when he's like five years old, and everyone's like, "Send him a fucking Christmas card," <laughs> and then he gets ten thousand Christmas cards. I had everyone on the yak. <laughs> we had everyone reply. Drop your fits like two days after the Kentucky Derby. So you had like 300 replies. Does, my only question, and then I can leave it be and let you guys settle it out. Are does, we recording? Does, I, I have no Still? idea. I have no idea. Uh, does yeah. this reflect like, poorly, poorly on me? me is all no. Like, I, no. Do, do, you, do you look at this and say like, what the hell is Titus doing? Keep your dog on a leash. No, 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 no. Because <laughs> I want it very clear. And I this might never go out. This just might be us talking. Guys like Cody, we need guys like Cody. To make the to to the the young bucks to infuse the young people out there uh, in the bar stool. So I'm I'm a Cody fan. Does he maybe tweet like he's tweeting to like five hundred thousand people when it's really like, <laughs> like fifty? That's fine. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay because you, like young dumb and full. But he's of doing cum. it for the love of the game. Yeah, yeah right. Is, right. You know, so like right. Maybe- so his heart's in the right place. <laughs> so there's like two types of like there there can be people. Like Cody, who have their heart in the wrong place, who I would not like, but I can tell he's a good, genuine guy, um, and he'll learn. He'll learn his path. Yeah. He's also like I, Cody. I like this. I know I'm talking like you're not even here right now. Sorry, but um, it's also like people show up to the internet, like with their eyes wide open, being like, "This is going to be awesome. People are going to be nice." In like five years, he'd be like, "Oh yeah, the internet's a fucking mean, terrible right, right, place. Right, 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 right. Like it's an awful place to be every day." Yeah, yeah. So he just hasn't had that happen yet, and once it does, he'll it will slowly get only, beaten out of him. But only, I, I want to cherish it right now. Yeah, the only worse thing than not having a following on the internet is having a following on the internet. Yeah, right, <laughs> right, that's, that's right. Because like the then people are going right, to just yeah, then you're going to be uh, like drop your fits, and people are going to be just ruthlessly mean yeah. to you. And you're going to be like, well, this fucking sucks. Yeah, nice, nice thumb. I'd rather asshole. go over 30 than over 9. <laughs> right, yeah. right. So, yeah, no, I'm a Cody fan, but yeah, he's uh, he's just, he, he is, Fasoli was the same way, and I love Fasoli. Just they, they viva right. so hard. They, they, yeah, they, yeah. they <laughs> what's the, what's the Tommy hard. Lasorda, like he bleeds Dodger blue, whatever, whatever yes. you would bleed, he bleeds, I don't know what you'd bleed, he bleeds viva. That's what he does. Hell TJ yeah. used to there be might like be a, that There too. might be a new leaf for me to turn tomorrow. I'm turning 25, so maybe I'll be, I'll yeah, be off. There we go. You could rent a well, car. I mean, is that all you're saying? Your brain will be fully developed at that point. <laughs> yeah. too, I'm old, so. man. Yeah. yeah. You're not. You have, no. Uh, all right. Now I don't like you. Okay. <laughs> all Back right. Back to not liking you. <laughs> that, was a, that was a great 10 minutes. Dude, 25 <laughs> is so young. It's so awesome. I'm still I, young at 38. I just, the kids. TJ, are, were we recording all this? Yeah. Just throw it on the just throw it on the <laughs> end of the show. The end. Throw it after I say goodbye yeah, to everybody. Post stuff, the, post, the, the post show. Uh, yeah. yeah, post yeah. post show. Yeah. Uh, I do have to run though. So um if you guys if you guys well, want to keep, you you keep talking at you know, No, I'm yeah. good. Keep I've had enough record. Cody today. <laughs> 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 All right. I like you, Cody. I'll see you. When are you moving? When are you moving? Twenty second. Okay. 
I'm sure you'll probably be at my doorstep <laughs> being like, where are we going to go fucking hang out? Cody, tonight? you should have hit, you should hit big cat with like a, like knowing he was moving in this week and knowing that he like hired a thousand movers to do everything. You should have I hit, didn't. I unfortunately did not. I should have, but I, I, I thought about doing this. You should, you should have done this too, Cody. You should have just texted him like anything I can do to help with the move. <laughs> so yeah. Like, hey, you need me to, no, this you is need me a, to like move your mattress for this, you. And then he'd be like, no, I got it taken care of. This is the last move of my life. I'm either going <laughs> to die right. in the house I bought or I'm going to do the rich guy move next time where I go on vacation for three weeks and yeah. hire someone to e- actually like unpack and put it everywhere. Yeah. That's put, what I'm going to do. Put flowers in my vase for me and put like, like do, do that white glove yeah. type. Treatment. I was a, yeah. I was an F minus today in the un- my wife caught me sleeping in a fucking side room and she's like what are you doing <laughs> i was like i'm just tired <laughs> all right all right see you cody Bye. all right see you guys